Hello? Hello, hello. Hello, okay. Can you hear me good? Yeah, I can hear you uh, well. You've got some background noise, but it's voice activation, so it's not too bad. Yeah, I, I'm i downstairs. It's kind of like by a furnace, so that might be it, I think, but... A furnace? <laughs> yeah. Living in a morgue or something? That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Burning bodies on the side. <laughs> oh my god. He's like in a steam train, getting all the coal in there. <laughs> Just uh, down in the system. All right. You want to elaborate on the furnace, or is that just gonna, we're um, just gonna bypass? I don't know, that? just like like a home furnace, like or water heater. I don't know exactly what to call it. Like just the thing that heats your home. Mm. We call it a boiler over here. Yeah, I guess you can call it that. Okay, so I don't know. I think uh, I think it's maybe from my mom because my mom is foreign, so she always called it a furnace. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay. So I don't know. I'm just like kind of translating into English, I guess. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, it, it, it probably ever, called differently or something everywhere. Hero mm -hmm. Chris, we finally got a hold of you. Yes, yes. Are, are I'm to set sorry up? for taking so long. <laughs> well, I'm. That's why I took a little bit longer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> just late Give getting up. Back. Yeah, just revenge. You know. For sure. Petty, petty revenge. No, no <laughs> we're good. We're good. Um, let's get the music on in the background, which I. Just could be a little bit louder. All right. So what do we have? We have Monk Noon two fifteen Night Lord. Mm. How are you feeling about Night Lord? I I absolutely love it. Um, I love the burst. Mm -hmm. I love the mobbing. Mm -hmm. Um, I recently I was actually like training my Mercedes and I saw a video of some guy because of like some input lag and stuff. He put his flash jump on an actual key mm -hmm. and then i tried that and i did like my wer is basically like jump flash jump showdown so like i just like i jump and i throw the knife and you can just constantly repeat it and it's just buttery smooth i love it mm -hmm. and uh, then, uh, yeah notice that night walkers do that as well some some classes for extra mobility they they opt to do that mm -hmm. i guess most characters already have so many keys you want to <laughs> you just focused on what can i not put on a key but um yeah, yeah that's true if you use it a yeah, lot no, then maybe Lord's it's a good pretty, idea you have your mobbing and you have your bossing skill and that's basically it so <laughs> yeah it's not i mean you have a bunch of other skills you could use but it's not super you, necessary i i do use them for sure it's just like it's not uh i feel like it's not as intensive as like arc or something mm -hmm. yeah yeah or like to was it Ilium? What was the character I was on recently? Just, there was just so many buttons going on. Well, actually, kind of Adele has that, even though the standard is very simple. But if you really want to mm -hmm. fully utilize the character, there's actually a lot of skills that maintain some kind of utility later on okay. in the game. So if you want to keep using your character at max you know, capacity, mm -hmm. you have to have actually like really kind of a lot of APM. skills. Yeah, but it's more so that you have kind of an escape in every single situation kind of deal. Oh, okay, so you have like iframes and stuff like that. Yeah, you have iframes, HP shields, um, wow. relocation skills that can, you know, you have like a plummet down, you have a diagonal backwards backstep kind oh of God. in the air. Yeah, It's like a fighting game or something. Yeah, almost, yeah. And you have, you can float in the air for a little bit and you can dash, you can make crystals in eight directions and then dash towards them, stuff wow. like that. So. You can do a whole lot of stuff, so I, I guess to a certain extent they do expect you to, to take care of those uh, those options that you have. Mm -hmm. Yo, thank you. Uh, fuck, why do you keep forgetting your names? Lido, right? Uh, no, my name is. Chris. No, 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 sorry, sorry, <laughs> it's a summer sub. <laughs> yeah, I know your oh, name. Right, I was gonna assume my with bad. Hero Chris that your name was Lido. <laughs> that was like a safe assumption. I feel on my side. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. You can't hear it. Um. Apparently neither kind of chat, so we'll have to I, I didn't have stream open, so yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, okay, so and what are you? Um, what are like your achievements so far? Like, what's the, the things you so, most proud of? Um, I recently have struggle ran hard hilla with like three other people. Mm -hmm. We had like a, a Kana, a Beast Tamer, and then I think one guy that was just like 180 or something, he was just kind of tagging along. So kind of th kind of three people, but mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, I, I've been getting a bunch of characters to 200, which has been an enjoyable experience. Okay. Kind of just uh, spamming Monster Park, Horntail, and like Pink Bean. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I'm currently a guild leader. I just, for fun, decided to start a guild because I was wondering like what the bonuses were like a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And then now we have like 60 characters in there and a bunch of people and it's a nice little community. So I'm enjoying that a lot. Okay. I'm just scrolling down that shit a little bit more. And what's uh what's next on the menu? So uh we're I'm looking to get into CRA. Mm -hmm. I've I've never reached that level before. Mm -hmm. Um all my characters basically like I started this character two years ago and I think I like kind of like struggled it to like two hundred, then I hit like Arcane River and the mobs are really hard and I'm like, fuck this shit, basically. <laughs> there, yeah, then, it's quite a big bump. Yeah. And then, um, like, even with a little bit of Arcane Force, it was still, like, a still like a struggle. I had, like, no Legion, no Link skills or anything. Mm -hmm. And then uh, every once in a while, me and my, like, friend from grade school, we kind of were like, oh, hey, look, there's, like, a Mega Burning or there's, like, a Terra Burning. Let's, like, hop on for, like, a few hours and mm -hmm. screw around. And But, like... I like kind of like being efficient in things that I do. So I kind of looked up like what the general like progression of like characters is. And like, I saw mm -hmm. that like Mercedes, Aran, Evan were like good things to make. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted the uh, Cygnus buff for like the attack. So I made like a blaze wizard. Um, and then demon Avenger was like the later one from those. And then um, this recent Terra burning, I got, my arc and my marksman to 210, the two characters. Mm -hmm. And those were both very, very fun. Yeah, arc had a very solid link skill as well. Mm -hmm. They can help you out. And it's a little awkward how your claw is like above your outfit. The Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's so it's weirdly layered, but okay. Um, hopefully that's too much detail. You don't really see it in game that much if you're jumping around. <laughs> Yeah, it's... I don't notice it in the moment. They just want you to get an NX Claw, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Um, I haven't even looked at those, I don't know what the options are. Um, yeah, I'm not sure either. There's a lot of universal covers more and more now recently, where everyone mm. can kind of just take everything. Oh, okay. Um, Alright, so CRA is like the... Um, that's like the reasonable short-term goal that you want that you're actively like now the, as the next step working towards yeah um so we've we've done a few like practice runs with the guild and stuff mm -hmm. and uh i'm just i think it's mostly like uh i need more ied for now mm -hmm. and we tried it i didn't have my hyperstat into my scroll for the 40 percent ied reduction so i was missing a lot there uh okay mm -hmm. and then um even here on this IED calculator, like I'm missing, uh, I'm missing ambition. I forgot to put that in. Mm -hmm. And it's then a frailty, uh, what were you talking about? It was a frailty curse, right? Yes, yes. No, yeah. because initially it like doesn't work on bosses or something, and then you have to make. Yeah, it, and then you have to hyperstat it. Which is weird because it gives IED, which is, would only work on bosses in the first place. So it's kind of strange. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Unless we get some really crazy like 275 plus mobs that are. Yeah, <laughs> what if those suddenly have like 400% PDR or something? Yeah. Oh my god, that'd be nuts. <laughs> that'd be so weird, you gotta, you gotta go like embossing gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all have, they all count as bosses, so you have to have like boss lines and stuff. Yeah, I mean that would be dope though, because you would end up... I mean, like if you had a whole map full of elite monsters after a while... True you would be able to kill them pretty quickly too because of all the extra percentage damage that would apply to them. So, But yeah, you'd have mm -hmm. to switch your gear around a little bit, yeah. Uh, okay, but that's uh, so th that's the only one you forgot. Ambition, it's 10%, right? Yeah, um, I think there was... Oh, I recently got my uh, Beast Tamer to 150. Mm -hmm. And my... So I got my Aran to 200 recently. My Evans coming up next. I'm all just doing this. It kind of takes me like... I'd say like a week or two to get them to 200, mm -hmm. just like a few minutes, few minutes a day, and then uh, 
Yep. My B statement's coming up, so that's a little bit of IED soon as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the th the title from the event gives 30%. So I'm going to, it, it's 14 day duration. So I'm going to hold off on claiming that as long as possible so I can have it as like late in my character as possible, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah, so we replace the Ursus title, which is only a little bit of IED, and then hopefully give you that yeah. jump that you can get into, into CRA with. Yes. Okay, um, and then, so when it comes to IED, because we can just like jump into IED right now. Um, yeah, sure. See where that takes us. Um, so do you understand how it's calculated and all the sources and how to work the calculator? That all that all makes sense to you? Yes, I do. And how it stacks and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I do know how it interacts with the PDR for the bosses and like what, why do you even want it in the first place? Kind of what the importance yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, so, the main... Because I did see you had some pictures down here. Um, I got... Where were they? You had some pictures of familiars, right? Because those are usually... Yeah. Huge in this I've, stage of I've the been, game. Uh, I've, I don't know how, what the average like count is. And like, I know I don't get that okay. many familiar cards. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I've opened probably like a hundred or two hundred, and I still haven't got any IED. Yeah, usually lines, on other characters where I needed to get them, um, to get two of them, usually I had to open around around 160 of them. Okay. So it, they aren't. It definitely isn't super common or something. And on one character got unlucky, had to open 600, and on one other character I had to open like five. So you know, there's okay. there's like huge variance there as well. And then the familiar bonus, does it stack or is it multiplicative? Multi multiplicative? Um, so let's say that you have two familiars that have 15% ID, for example. Yeah, does it become 30? Uh, no, it, it stays two okay. individual sources of 15. Oh, so it's it's not as good as it seems. Um, well, it's still, it's if you still get a to, source, it, but... Yeah, it's still, it's still a really good source, yeah. And if you get them to higher level, there is also 20 and 30% uh, ID oh, lines okay. in the higher rarities. But that's at what, like unique? Uh, epic and unique, yeah, yeah, mainly in unique. Mm -hmm. um, okay. In uh, but still, for when it comes to rare, there's not that much value in them. Like a little bit of healing, a little bit of drop rate increase, and ID. Like those are really the only things that do good stuff. So see, you right. you, you kept the one um, when hit get uh, one second invincibility. So that um, yeah. any kind of line like that in the entire game, that only works if you get hit by something that doesn't do um, a percentage of your HP. Uh, oh, wow. damage so it's only like flat amount damages is oh, okay. what, what that triggers mm -hmm. on so for like bosses and later on in the game, it seems like really good but it doesn't trigger for, for a bunch of stuff it's kind of like when you okay. see those lines of um, reduced incoming damage that's only for flat numbers right it doesn't work on any percentage unless it specifically oh, says okay, yeah. works on percentage damage attacks yeah mm -hmm. I, I saw I was rolling I think I'm not sure inner ability or something and like for Sunday and mm -hmm. uh, I saw like final damage uh plus percent of like defense i'm like oh this is like awesome but then i looked at it and I, it's probably flat i'm like oh <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you see something with final damage and you get really happy and you're like oh i do like six yeah. six thousand damage per line now that's so amazing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. while i'm doing trying to do billions so it's not really registering at all yeah yeah it's kind of a debate when you see that final damage word and then oh never mind there's a bunch of debates in this game. Yep. Yeah, there is. It's especially because there's some old numbers and old stats that just persist throughout updates. Um, yeah. Even now, like with the renewed familiar system, which is from 2020, but there's still some stats in there that you're like, well, how did it make it past 2008? But I think they purposefully keep a bunch of that stuff in there just to, you know, dilute the chances of getting good stuff. Right, right. Which is, you know, fuels our frustration and fuels our addiction of playing longer and playing more i guess for sure um yeah, I, so I actually even got my uh my second best in slot uh inner ability i got the five percent damage to debuff i know it can go up to eight but um it's still something okay and that's Bro. within the same tier uh the so the sorry what is it within the same tier the five and the eight i am not sure i haven't checked that so let's see, damage to D 
debuff. Let's see what that is called. Dun, dun, dun. Damage increase to normal monsters. To monsters with abnormal status. That's this, right? Uh, yeah, five is epic. Is the highest possible epic, and then eight is a uh, unique. So oh, okay. yeah, okay. so with epic, you have the highest. Uh, you have the highest number within so, its current tier. So there's no six and seven. It just goes five and then eight, kind of. Uh, there is a seven, but that's also a unique line. Okay. So the re reason it's important to know is have you ever seen those chaos circulators? Those black ones? Yes. So yeah, yeah, so those can re-roll within the tier. So if you had seven, then okay. you could re-roll it to eight. But since it's five, mm -hmm. the only thing it can re-roll to is down to four. So for that so would specific you, line. Sorry, would you recommend just um, continuing to re-roll my last two lines then? If it's just epic? So, so what is it now? 20 boss, 5% damage to debuff, and then just a junky third line? And then just a junk stat, yeah. Um... What do they give a best in slot? Like crit or something? I, I think it's um, 20 boss, um, damage to debuff, oh, and 21 attack. Yeah, to attack properly, right? Because you have such low base attack on your weapon. Yeah. Um, hmm. yeah, the, the I mean, imagine the attack probably scales pretty well. Honestly, I probably keep what you have now for a while. Okay. Um, and then if you have a bunch of money later in the game, you want to min max, you can always throw like, just set yourself a certain budget and just throw some circulators out there to see if you hit that 21 attack uh, or, okay. or the 8%. And then if you hit that, then you keep it and then you reroll for your boss on the top again. Cause you can, can do circulators allow you to lock the skills or no? No, but they do allow you to just go back to the previous one, like a black. Cube. Okay. So there is some safety there. Okay. Yeah, no, once you switch to the new one, then all three get replaced, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the way you also want to look at it is that um, I would only do it if you're trying to aim for that 21 attack. I wouldn't do it if you're trying to aim for that 8% damage to um, to normal monsters, because uh, to debuff monsters. Because if that happens and you hit that 8... Uh, no, is 8% the highest you can get on unit? Yeah. Because um, if you get that and then you have to roll back your, um, your prime line... Yeah. Uh, for the boss damage, there's a good chance that um, uh, there's a good chance that you get so because legendary has a lot of variants. You see, it goes from 15 to 20. Oh so, wow! So there's like 50/50 chance that what you end up with is the same or lower damage boss damage, which means that switching didn't even make, become an upgrade, right? Because you're going from 25% right, right. damage Just now to either 25 or 24 or 23 maybe. So, You're just sinking money. Yeah, for like, a, yeah, even at this, it's a 1% damage increase, right? Which at that mm -hmm. point, you're probably going to be doing like 500, 600% total damage during your burst. So that's like quite, pretty insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Um, I could see you going for the 21 attack because I assume that's better than the 5% damage to debuffed. Right. Um, but yeah, I would leave your current inner ability for quite a while. Okay. That's more of like a much later in the game. Yeah, what some people do is they go for Mezzo Obtain for a while, so just so you can make a lot of money while you're still leveling up, so you don't really rely yeah. on that boss damage. Sorry, one sec, my headphone disconnected. Oh, okay. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Yep, no problem. Um, yeah, one thing that people do is they go for Mezzo Obtain as their top line for a while, just to make more mm -hmm. money while they're training. Um, because then in the long run, that does pay off for itself, and then you're not that's as, true. yeah. But that's mainly I useful didn't... for classes that don't need the attack speed plus one to hit their, their attack speed cap. Oh, okay. I didn't have a pet until recently, because mm -hmm. this is like an old character, and then we weren't at like hard hilla level yet. Mm -hmm. But, um, that struggle run that we did, I got my, actually... I got two boxes before from normal Hilla, and it was both ear earrings, so that was feels bad, man. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Running normal for pets and then getting earrings <laughs> is such a, <laughs> such a slap in the face, you know. It is. Um, yeah, so that's well, that's one thing we definitely look at is like the boss damage and the ID. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep the current in the ability since you've already invested some, and just save up honor experience and save up money, and then, you know, okay. at a later date, go harder on that. Yeah, and then on my uh, on my mules, it's 
okay to have like a uh, item drop percent as inner ability for like getting like lucky belts and golden clovers and stuff right oh like, yeah i don't know how far you're gonna push those characters um are you trying to just I, get I think... like decent star force on them is that why uh i don't i don't know what would decent mean uh like 120 around 120 is like a good place to to park them okay I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't do that initially because to... like that will disproportionately cost you a lot of money. Um, yeah. But like eventually, like if there's a one plus one um, Star Force event up to ten, that's like an ideal time to get all of their stuff just up to twelve for fifty percent mm. off, and then okay. their Legion raid power will increase quite a bit and give you more passive coin income. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So well, so if you like prep having the items and then just sit on them until an event like that, that's like the that's like a good way to go. Yeah. Um, um, I think uh, the. I'm actually gonna like spam. I think the four guys, like the Demon Avenger. Maybe not the Demon Avenger, because that class is kind of suffering for me. <laughs> um, the Mercedes, the Aran, and the Evan, I think, to 210, just for like that. Those extra little XP gains for yeah. building Legion. And Zero has a XP gain as well. That as well, yeah. yeah. That's true. But that class is also suffering, so. <laughs> yeah, if you just have those four at a decent, uh, like at a high level, then everything else will follow. Whatever, um, after the experience ones. Have you seen my Lynx uh, command? Yes, yes yeah. I have. So after that, you get the critical rate and the critical damage as being very important. And then the yeah. flat damage. So if you I, have those... I think uh, Phantom is my next one, yeah. probably. Yeah, if you, have, um, if you have all of those taken care of, uh, then every next character you make is going to be very, very strong very quickly, and then mm -hmm. the leveling is going to come way more easily. Uh, but making like a whole legion of, of level 140s will get you very, very far in um, in building out your grid, and that's when we can talk more about like getting into critical damage, ignore defense, boss damage, maybe a little bit of crit rate depending on how your distribution is, and then you kind of abandon the middle of the grid where it's you know just those base base stats in the stats, middle yeah. yeah but then later on you just use it as a connector between the left and the right side where all those important stats are mm -hmm. um but we originally were talking about ied so um let's let's finish that so we can move on um so major things that you can add is ied familiars right um as you're leveling a bunch of characters you're also going to get a bunch of familiars um, mm -hmm. Because it's ju it's just a matter of um, like killing monsters gives you familiars basically. It's so, like the more you kill, the better. Um, do you know for familiars kind of how the whole system works? Um, like the is I was gonna ask like, do you mean like the drops? Like does it drop like near your level mostly, or like the more so the Roros familiar like section? Um, yeah, kind of like the drops where you would go to get them. Oh no, I don't. So in general, it's just if you, if if a monster has a familiar, then it just drops it all at the same rate. So it's purely a numbers game, as in like where you can kill the most monsters, where you get the most familiars, basically. Ah, uh, I see. Um, and then the more drop rate you have, of course, on your character, that also increases yeah. how many familiars you get. Um, and this is like a common. I don't know if it's a misconception or there are some other things that kind of hint to it, or maybe other games do this. But if you are a higher level than the monster you're uh, you're killing, you don't lose drop rate on items. It stays exactly yeah, the it's, same. Yeah, it's just meso and XP, right? Yeah, just meso and XP. Yeah, everything else just stays okay. the same. You can still get your twisted times. You can still get your familiar cards. Yeah, that doesn't change. Okay. <clears throat> so you know, you could as a level two hundred just go to Drake's and just. You know, mow down that map for an hour and then get that. Yeah, yeah. Um, people try, if people are really actively looking for a lot of familiars, they typically go to Forsaken Excavation Site 2 uh, because of the layout and because of the amount of monsters there. And they have pretty big mm -hmm. hitboxes because they're pretty big monsters. And that's easy to kill a lot of monsters in. Uh, and that comes into the second thing. Like, what's, what's also really good is if monsters drop both the common and the rare cards because they're seen as separate drops. So you can just basically get a bunch more cards. Okay. Um, although the rare cards then, technically are I... worse for IED because they have more variants, but yeah. Uh, I see, like more lines to roll. Yeah, there's more out there's more outcomes, so therefore okay. the chance of getting your IED is actually a bit lower. But yeah, it's still um, a chance. What though. about <laughs> combining familiars? Like, should I be doing that at all? Or like, I don't. Yeah, the fusing. Yeah, I saw you had one that has that has one fuse or something because you see the 
the little crystal ball is like colored so it's like yeah, moved yeah. a little bit yeah um honestly at this point no you just want to mass reveal everything um okay. and if you have a bunch that are just useless because to to combine right it has to be the exact same familiar so the only way you can do that is if you're like actively sitting in one spot farming for them and you don't really do that until you get into moon bridge or above and that's when you're training in those areas level 245 plus and that's when they just drop while you're training and then you can start throwing them together and then you can start min maxing and going for epic and unique and going for those bigger chunks of ied drop rate healing uh boss damage those kind of things okay so for now it's just like reveal all and if you have a bunch of shitty ones you can just extract them for the coins and then you can buy booster packs with them and that'll unlock badges and stuff slowly. Yeah, that'll slowly unlock badges. There's also a chance to get epics there, so like a mini mini chance of getting some cool stuff. Um, okay. Yeah, and just and just more of them to reveal with the with the points that you get back, basically. Yeah, that's the two thousand point one, right? The booster pack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. it gives you like a I think it gives you a use item that you double click, and then it gives you an, a cash up item that's the actual booster pack, and then you open it from there. So a coupon for okay. a coupon for a pa pack for a <laughs> <laughs> with coins. Yeah. yeah. It's like a Matryoshka doll, just like... Yeah, yeah, just active. system and systems and systems, yeah. Yeah. Like when you get... Sometimes we get a coupon for a box that has coupons in it for coupons. And it's like, okay, <laughs> well, we're getting... Oh my god. When did, you know, science didn't stop to think if it could, it just... <laughs> if it should, it just uh, wondered if it yeah. could, you know, kind of thing. Um, okay, so... So, oh. I, so ID uh, from do two familiars that will help you a lot because yeah, like you said, that's definitely one of the things that you want to work on if you're going to do, be doing CRA. Um, mm -hmm. If your functional ID is eighty two, that's definitely something that needs to be improved because now a lot of your damage is not going to be applied, right? A lot of final damage yeah. reduction. So um, we want, and then your visual is very low because a lot of it comes from your uh, frailty curse, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And that's that's also kind of. Like he has to stay, uh, the boss has to stay in yeah, the curse that's, area. Yeah, that really then... sucks. It's good for like parties where like the boss is like bound or something, but yeah. and especially because it buffs others. But um, for solo, it's it really kind of sucks because especially if it's a mobile boss or something, then yeah, you have to like dance around the area to make sure they keep walking through it. For sure. Yeah, and you have to. Yeah, in the past, Night Lord was always like the class to go to because it was long range and you can attack from a distance and everything, but. Nightlord is kind of a melee class, I've noticed. <laughs> when you're playing it, like during your burst, you have to like stick to your target. For real, and, yeah. And your your quad throw is not that far. Like You're you're not even like throwing the shurikens, you're just like sticking it inside them like one at a time. <laughs> yeah, you're like slowly. pushing the shurikens to <laughs> yeah, die. Yeah. Not really a stealthy ninja, you're more like a stabby. <laughs> you're, more, you're, more, you're more like the real shadow where, where you're like stabbing True. them with with, with shuriken. Mm -hmm. Um, so see, so yeah, ambition. Um, uh, well, yeah, I think my ambition is gonna be. I boss every day. I get like, I do all the early to mid game kind of things, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I don't know I level up like once every few days. So I think it's coming. I know it gets slower towards the end, but yeah, it doesn't yeah. get the trade doesn't go that much slower. It's not really an exponential curve. It just goes up by a little bit, um, and it okay. doesn't slow down tremendously. So it's not too bad. Okay, that's good then. Yeah, hundred is uh, hundred ambition is doable for a lot of characters. Yeah, it's not like you have to massively commit or something. Yeah. Um, so monster Parker metal, you're not working on that one, right? Because you're mainly using it to level up other characters. Um, I could. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes like what like. Two months or one and a half months or something? Um, yeah, if you start from zero, it's 11, 11 weeks of seven runs a day. I think I have like, t uh, I don't know, like 15 or 20 progression for like each day kind of on this character. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't be that far, I guess. Yeah, it's like eight, eight, eight to nine more weeks. Yeah. That's doable, yeah. That would be like a two month project. Yeah. And okay, so that that's that one thing you could do. Um, Potential lines, we get into that in a little bit. Um, yeah, bonus sets, uh, you're probably getting a little bit from boss accessory, right? For sure, for sure. Uh, I think you had that in the... Did you have that in the lists? Oh no, you have the... Oh yeah, pencil your boss set, yeah, I... there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Legion Grid bonus, so that's not uh, available yet. Legion member bonus. Um, 
So that's the... I'm coming up on DC? that probably within the next like two weeks. I'll have 2k legion. So mm -hmm. Like what would I pro I know for like bossing and mobbing it's different But mm -hmm. um, how much point does each block give for the ID from the legion? Oh, so like the outside legion everything is uh, One block is 1% the only exception okay. is critical damage is a half and bonus experience is a quarter But everything else is just wow. one, one to one Hmm they really don't want you to have fun, eh? No, the full bonus experience block is 10%, which when you think about it, that's already pretty nice, mm. but it does require okay. 40 blocks to fill, so that is quite pricey. Mm -hmm. But yeah, mainly the, you use the Legion for like ignore defense and boss damage uh, and critical damage, and then when you're mobbing, you keep the critical damage, but you can pretty much get rid of all the, the boss damage and the IED, so if you move that onto boss damage, uh, to bonus experience, kind of consolidate those two blocks you have, that's still pretty okay. doable. Mm. And then just from like a backwards L through the middle, I guess. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so the thing also with you know with the 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 size of the ID buff, like the bigger the better, right? Because of the because of how it's calculated. Yeah. So as soon as you get to two K, you might be tempted to put points into IED. But at that point, if you can just make one chunk of six percent IED, it's not that good. It'd be way right. more valuable as a source of either 6% boss damage or 3% critical damage or even some main okay. stat in the middle. It's not until you have at least 3k legion that you can make like a source of 13%. That's when mm -hmm. it starts kind of counting. Okay. Yeah, so don't move into that too, uh, too quickly. Um, but we'll talk about that and we'll talk about some link skills as well that you can... Because now we're at link skills, so um, how's the luminous looking? Uh... I, I don't even know what that character does, but I could take a look at it. Well, they have a like a giant stuff and they shoot magic at things. Um, and their link skill is IED. So at level 2, it gives you a 15% buff. Okay, and that's uh, 140? Uh, level 120, 120. So 140 is, okay. the, is the Legion. No. Right? Okay. Yeah, that's like the S rank for Legion. So that's when the piece gets one, one bigger. And then the okay. link skills are at 70, 120, and then 210 if it's available. The only big okay. exception there is zero, because their levels are all over the place because of the storyline and stuff. And right. They, because they start at a hundred, so they have like their own little, their own little rules. But that's all. Uh, yeah, that's all. That's all laid out in the links, uh, big links grid. Yeah. So if you look at that one and you look at where the um, ID is, um, then you can see which ones give. So uh, zero also gives some ID. So that might be something that you want to temporarily spec into. Typically, not someone yeah. people keep for a long time because it's quote unquote only 10% so there's a lot of other sources that end up being better um, but if you're really struggling for the ID um, then it would make sense that you yeah. pick it up for now because it will disproportionately increase your damage over something like just some stat sure. or something or even then even over some percentage damage how much is Lumi you said for the um, ID? So you could see here, no. um, yeah. so 0 is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then Night Lord, uh, no, not Night Lord, sorry, Beast Tamer goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, as the, uh, as the Legion buff to get, together with Blaster also gives the Legion buff. Mm -hmm. And then um, Lumi's right here, goes 10, 5, uh, 10, 15, 20, so at level 7, oh, wow. 20, and 2, 10. That's crazy. So that's really good. And then there's the um, Explorer Mages as well that uh, give you a debuff to the monster. Mm -hmm. uh, that stacks up to three times if it's level six total stacked into one slot. You know about stacking um, yes. skills? Yeah. yeah. So then uh, if it's maxed out, it gives you 9% damage and 9% ID on the target when it stays debuffed. And, you know, you Very have Assassin's nice. Marks flying around, so it's going to be debuffed yeah, yeah. all the time, easily guaranteed. Uh, and that debuff is, well, you have other debuffs already, but that for a lot of classes, they also use this debuff to trigger the Thief Link skill as well. Yeah. So it doubles I actually, down. uh, I was training the Beast Tamer and like the magic trumpets where you leave like the fire on the floor. Mm -hmm. The damage over time was so nice. So I was like considering maybe in the future making a fire poison, but I, again, I don't know how uh, similar that is. Um, it does. He has like a um, fire poison is like a fire trail that he leaves when you hit things, and then that could be okay. decent. They do build a lot of, of of DOTs. Yeah, I think they stack up to like six or seven DOTs at a certain point. Where there's not a lot of, like there's direct damage, but there's a lot of uh, like remnant damage over time effects that uh, keep happening on the boss that definitely all adds up over time. 
the yeah. steamer is a little bit weirder like that the, the boost note the, the, there's no boost note for the trumpet for example which is really weird hmm. um but still if you're strong enough and you can kill reasonably with that um beast steamers have been showing that they can train pretty well and they can post some pretty good rates as well okay but uh yeah it is quite a unique class of course <laughs> Yeah, this thing's is. very differently. Um, yeah, so these are actual uh, extra sources of ID from your Legion and your Lynx. Uh, of course, using all of these will be a nice, uh, nice addition, um, and might warrant if you're t turning more towards bosses and you have most of the ones before this done, most of the necessary ones specifically for your character. You'd be looking at these, right? Um, just the blue ones which are specifically yeah. for bossing. So that's the immunity from the resistance link. So that's whenever you die, you get seconds of immunity to damage, um, which for CRA and up is very, very useful. So you don't like respawn into effects that will kill you instantly again. Right. Because okay. you might be kind of struggling to keep your lives up. Uh, Shade mm -hmm. is like a little bit of a, you know, that's kind of a wild card, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Chance to defy death. Uh, and then the boss damage. Uh, which your boss damage isn't that high so these will disproportionately help you a lot as well so you have the demon slayer which is basically like the luminous equivalent but then for boss damage also 10 15 okay. 20. so that's also pretty big um that basically that's basically like an extra level of interability right right um and then all the id ones that we just talked about so those are those are very useful uh when you start doing cra and, and upwards so that's why they're a little okay. bit lower because they're specifically for bossing and usually mm -hmm. focus more on the other ones here uh, on the yellow ones because that's like the legion building part if you get yeah, these for up, early game getting your account up and running yeah exactly if you get this running then you're basically looking at a four to five k legion and then um once you start these going in and then all of your characters that you're doing um horn tail and pink bean with and stuff if you do that if you like doing that as leveling which i think that's mm -hmm. fine i didn't do that but i saw some other people do it and it is pretty fast um i did it for zakum in the early levels like up to 140 and then i kind of just left them at 140 for a while um yeah. it will make that all like faster as well right more id more right, boss damage. right the id doesn't impact as much that early on but it still does a little bit but the boss damage mainly is going to make them a lot stronger if they're if you're leveling okay. like leveling that way so that might not be a bad idea to do that okay um, yeah, so the boss damage is, uh, was it? So the beast tamer again that you're already working on. Um, the, I wouldn't focus on the Adele for this because it's not a lot and you're going to be soloing. So the flat damage is more important there. Um, uh, Demon Avenger, you already have that one. Uh, Kana, I believe you already have that one. I do, I do not know. Okay. So Kana also is a boss damage in the Legion and then percentage damage in the link skill. So that combined okay. is very nice. The level it's five and then 20% for Kana. Uh, five and ten. Five and ten. Oh, five and ten. Okay. What well, level do you get the level two on then? Uh, 120. Yeah. So if it just has two numbers, then level two is the highest. Okay. Huh. The way that it's like, um, notice different here is because it's a stacking one. So it like links to a picture where you can see, uh, what it yeah. does exactly. Cause it's a lot of text to put into a grid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can sense. see like level one, level six. Uh, but if it only shows two number, then it caps out. If it shows three numbers, then it, uh, has, has a level three at level two ten. Okay. So like a Kana at 140, uh, which is 60, 100, 140, would give you 13% damage basically on bosses, wow. which is pretty nice. Uh, and it's a very fast leveler as well, so that's definitely one to to consider. Yeah. yeah. And then the Demon Slayer for more critical damage. That's also a pretty strong character. Level 120 gives you 15%, only to bosses, of course. So this one is a bit more balanced to both help you on mobbing and in bossing. And this one gives you a bit more, but only works on bosses. Okay. Yeah, so this is a good one to look out for. And if you ever play one of these characters and it's just absolute shit, you just, <laughs> you know, or you hate it, you don't yeah. like it at all, then just, you know, you just put a, put a pin in it and then come back when it's a, when it's a mega burn or a terror burn. For sure. Um, how for, often are, how often are like mega burn, terror burn events? Um, it's pretty irregular. Um, I think they've kind of slowed down on doing mega burns because they really want to focus on the big terror burns during the summer and winter events. So, oh, okay, I see. So sometime, they'll do two during the summer and winter kind of? Yeah, that seems to be the thing now. So we usually just look at what KMS does and then we just copy that next minute. So what it's looking like KMS did for Neo. So for our summer event is that you get two Terra Burns. And I think if you do both, then for the second one, you can also pick like a fake uh, Absolab item. Oh, okay. 
Um, I don't know if it's for any character and in the count or if it's specifically for that one, but that also gives you a nice boost if you're trying to make a character that's like around 210 into another character that can do CRA, for example, for some extra income. Right. Uh, that's very useful for that. Okay. So are you going to ask something else? Uh, no, no. Okay. Um, yeah, so those will be like the important ones. Once you get the crit rate um, and crit damage, once you get those in, and then and these, your Legion and your Link skills will... Yeah, just it's really weird because your range won't go up at all, <laughs> but you're basically yeah. working on all the other numbers that will supplement whatever damage range mm -hmm. you actually have, which isn't really this number, but you know something close. It's to all that. just multipliers, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you need the ID to make your damage work, and you need the crit rate to make your crit damage work, that kind of thing. Yeah, and then once you get your, uh, if you do, because you're like okay, you're at 100% critical rate, so you don't really need it. But if you can get more critical rate, that means you can get some hyper set points out of there, and you can put them in ID and boss damage instead, right? Yeah, so I like... actually, I actually just recently respect it. So mm -hmm. my crit, crit, I got my uh, bunch of stuff to like. Actually, I was gonna ask that about the uh, the hyper stats. Yeah, sure. So I know this is much later on in the game, but where do you proportionately put points in once all your stuff is at 10 so like once you have the s tier the a tier mm -hmm. and then like the b and c like once those are all 10 like how do you or do you not have enough points to do all that for to 10 um uh, you can probably get a lot of stuff proportionally to 10 um but mainly so if you get like let's say the critical rate through boss damage like say those are all at 10 and you're starting to put points into lock and arcane power and attack and those kind of things um Typically, then it becomes time to like really, really critically look at calculators. Do you really need 10 at everything? You know, can you move your critical rate around a little bit? Um, I probably your ignore defense and boss damage are probably disproportionately going to go above 10 first because okay. damage gets 4% per level. And ID, since it's part of a chunk that's already 30, adding one level there is disproportionately useful because it adds to a, right. a bigger chunk of a singular ID. Okay. Um, and then th a third would be critical damage, but as you get later in the game, you tend to get more and more critical damage. So just because it's still one percent per level, it is pretty expensive to do that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it becomes much more of a puzzle of because if you check, if you look at crit, for example, um, there are a lot of smaller sources that initially you don't really get. But in the beginning, it's like oh, your hyper stats, it's whatever your character has, it's in your legion, and then that's pretty much it. But then it's like. Um, the um what is this crit damage hang on i was like what the fuck are these numbers hmm. um crit rate sources yeah um so your hyper stats, your link skills and the legion and then that's pretty much it and but then you know you get your decent sharp eyes your inner ability you can get your legion grit you can put more points in there your soul and your weapon can get it some boost notes for some skills get it familiars can get a little bit of crit um i think i have the um i think it's familiar uh badges can get a little bit of crit like it becomes a big puzzle of like a lot of small sources but you know you get one percent here two percent there three percent there and before you know it you can just spec you can just free up like 60 points in your hyper stats suddenly right and, right and then you almost get a free level of boss damage instead so those small sources are not to be underestimated like that because yeah i mean level nine to ten in critical rate costs you 35 points but gives you two Two is not a huge number, but two is a huge number on top of 13. But if you get two from another source, then, you know, maybe you can get 4% boss damage instead. So that's when you okay. really start, <laughs> like, weighing your options and really looking at the opportunity cost of putting in something over over respecking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, you know, yeah, inner ability and link skill movement and all of that kind of hinges together. You try to optimize that. Um, did we get through all the ID stuff? Oh yeah, no, we were at the, um, the link skills. Yeah, so next is familiar and badge effects. Um, the badge effect is like a minor thing that you can worry about later, because those are individual sources of 3%, and those also count individually, so the best yeah. you can get there is three lines of 3% for like an 8.7%. It's not, that's not like terribly important. Uh, but the familiars themselves and getting the 15% lines dead for you is probably going to be disproportionately priority. Okay. Uh, because you do need to get that IED up quite a bit. So we're probably looking at one line in your WSE if you don't have that yet, which I don't think you do. Um, mm -hmm. And the two familiars to add. Um, so what are your hyper sets at now? Because you said you redid something. So, one sec. So I have... So six lock, 
4 crit rate, uh, crit damage 10, ignore defense 6, damage 10, boss damage 5, mm -hmm. attack power 6, and arcane force 5. Mm -hmm. And do you need the um, arcane force, do you need the arcane power to uh, hit your 50% plus on the monsters you're killing? No, I don't. Um, the reason I kept it is because I think I'm going to be entering Lachlan or Lachlan mm -hmm. soon. So probably within the next like two, three weeks. But I don't know. It's it's like 10 mil. It's not that much compared to like my total wealth. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Do you think it's worth like taking out for now? Well, um, kind of what, um, so this is maybe a shortcoming of my, because you checked the hyperset guide, right? Because you specifically, yes. for instance, tier, yeah. So maybe that's a little bit of a shortcoming of my guide, but um, my um, a goal for the guide was not to say that you like, you have to level up your, your luck and your attack power and your arcane power necessarily. The, so the arcane power is like optional if you need it to hit the the damage yeah. necessary and mm -hmm. and the attack power and luck is basically only what you do if you have leftover points oh, okay i see so it's more important because um you're focusing damage over boss damage which makes sense if you need damage to kill monsters in regular uh in regular areas but i if you do for sure still i'm not like one shotting mm -hmm. or anything I, I can probably like two and a half shot or two if i'm all buffed with like legion and masaryu's buff and everything like i can yeah. probably two shot for sure mm -hmm. um yeah so the attack and the luck is one two three four five so one two four eight ten that's 25 uh 25 point each so that's 50 points um and in boss damage that means you could get two levels in boss damage which i believe does that give you eight percent more boss damage uh, let me see. Because I think starting at five, is it four? It gives. It would give six percent more for two levels. You said. Mhm. Mm yeah, six percent. Yeah. Um. Yeah, attack is is disproportionately good for you. The reason that luck is kind of a like a black sheep of the stats is because it doesn't get multiplied by percentages. Right. It's like a right. flat amount. So it's kind of just like two levels of your like arcane symbol or something. Um. Is it that but right is now it's at like 180 ish so yeah yeah it'd be like two level yeah roughly yeah um so wait sorry recap so we're like your crit was it was it are you at six ten six ten five uh do you want me to just screenshot it i'll send it to you on discord yeah well yeah just for the visual i guess do 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 Oh, four, ten, six, seven, five. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the four crit rate gets you to um, to one hundred. Gets me to ninety, and then I think uh, sharp eyes gets me to a hundred. Sharp eyes to one hundred. Yeah. Okay. But I think with the upcoming, especially with like phantom and stuff, I'll slowly be specking out of that. Um. Yeah. Because right now, basically every link skill you're getting, you can, you can, still throw it in because you don't have that many yet, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is your. Yeah, so you're just using everything that's useful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, so damage-wise, if and if you're doing boss damage, because we didn't, we kind of skipped over that one. Uh, just like the regular damage dudes. Uh, one that's really good is the Kadena. Okay. Um, it gives you so it maxes out at level two, so that's also nice. Um, it gives you six percent, but for two different things. So for if you're higher level and if it's uh under status effect so if it's both if you're a higher level than the target than the boss which you mo most of the time are um yeah. and if it's under a status effect which it pretty much always are if you're team fighting then you get 12 percent mm -hmm. damage from that so are those uh that higher level thing is that like a separate multiplier from all your damage that's just you can look at it as like six percent more damage it just goes into the pile of damage bonus in your stat window basically Okay, it's, so it's additive? Yeah, additive, kind of? yeah, yeah. Okay. And then when you're bossing, your boss damage and your damage bonus all gets additive into one giant pile. Mm. So you really want to okay. look at boss damage and percentage damage kind of as the same. The further you go, once your kill speed of all the monsters around you is kind of just good, is kind of 100%, at that point you want to equate 
bonus damage and boss damage pretty much and then you're gonna find that you're most of the time just focusing boss damage instead because those sources are usually a little bit higher because they only work on bosses but, okay but if you're looking you know if you're equalizing them then that means that you want to uh yeah you want to go harder on those because they're more efficient mm -hmm. that's what like with hyper stats going above 10 um i think at hyper stats you I think you get 35 percent uh boss damage at level 10 but you only get 30 percent regular damage because of that but that means oh, that you okay. start getting four percent per boss damage so like on my arc i think i have level 14 or something boss damage but it gives you like 52 or some crazy number oh, um, okay. yeah then then it, that starts stacking like really really well but that's only okay. if you don't need the damage to, and as a night lord you might still need the damage for quite a while because you want your assassin's marks to be able to two shot and then later one shot right right so that is a uh, that is a more delicate balance that you have to uh, you take into consideration. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't think there's any other flat damage one because you have the other ones. Ilium is a little bit uh, inconsistent. Angelic Buster might be something to look into. The, is that the uh, like the sixty percent damage or whatever? Yeah, for ten seconds, which of course is yeah. very burst heavy. If you can combine that with your uh, your spread throw and your what is it, your charms now that you have the throwing blast. Yeah, if you combine it with both of those in a party fight, that's definitely like you can get a lot of mileage out of that skill. And oh, since for it, sure. and since it's a link skill, it's also affected by buff duration. So eventually, Ooh. it'll also last a little bit longer than that. Okay. So that's quite nice. You already Demon Avenger. Um, yeah, Ho Young also gives the IED, so we mentioned it there. And then the Kana, and then you have the Explorer Mages again. And then you have the other mm -hmm. Thieves. Uh, I don't know if you have Shadow and Dual Blade already. No, not yet. Um, it's a little bit later, but they stack their Link skill in your own Link skill to make your own Link skill stronger. So. Right, so you get like an extra slot kind of there, technically. Yeah, you, yeah. Everyone, everyone at this point basically has thirteen link skills. Yeah, you have your own, and then twelve extra. In the past, there were some classes, specifically the explorers, that just didn't have one at all. So they were actually limited to twelve. But now everyone oh, wow. essentially has thirteen. Okay. Yeah, and then you start moving things around a little bit, but you still have some stuff that uh, would be more easily replaced. Like you're using the the adventure link skill for a little bit of crit, right? Like right now, there's room for that, but eventually, something that just gives you two or three percent crit isn't gonna cut it when it comes to link skills right a lot of other stuff is going to get way more value mm -hmm. uh but yeah you can come to you can cross that bridge when you come to that of course there's a lot of there's a still a road ahead for sure but there are some good options there do you do you think uh parking my night lord at like 220 and just kind of like doing dailies and then working on legion would be like a good uh good way to progress um, I would always do a little bit of both. Um, as long as you're enjoying the Night Lord, don't like, don't put that enjoyment of the Night Lord second. I would always put okay. that first. Um, but as long as you do a little bit of Legion every day, and I think in the beginning, um, since you said you were trying to do things efficient, I don't want to take things away from you that you enjoy because that's yeah. what's going to keep you playing the game. But when you're looking at purely like um, efficiency-wise to build your Legion, you just want to make a whole bunch of level 60s. Okay. And once they hit level six, because those first sixty levels are super easy, super fast, right? Yeah. And once just they do hit, like a theme dungeon and it explodes. Yeah, and every level sixty you get, boom, is sixty levels on your on your grid. Whereas that's the same amount of levels that you gain if you get a one forty to two hundred now, right? Which yes, is which that's takes true. way more effort. So if you make like one extra character a day, in a month you'll have like eighteen hundred legion just basically for free, just for having all the characters just at level sixty. And then it's a small jump from 60 to 70 where you have unlock all of their level one links. Okay. Hmm. Um, and then that way, because there's definitely like power in numbers, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the way you think, it, if you slowly get them up to 100, then 100 just Zakum every day, up to 120 very easily, up to 140, and then suddenly hmm. you have a 6k Legion. Okay. Hmm. So it, that's like an option, right? If you if you enjoy doing one character at a time and leveling up, doing the bosses, um, if you add just one character a day, right, to level 60, then in a month you're looking at doubling your legion only in, in that way alone. Oh yeah, that sounds great actually. And you should be and like you, 4k, 5, 5k um, in not too long, I think, if you have the time. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, I do. I'm I'm home. I'm a student right now. Everything's on lockdown, so. Nice. Well, not nice actually. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah. I do, I do. If I had to do home classes, I think I would have flunked college. I don't know if I would have been able to get through because yeah, I need it's... that like that going to a building and being there and having to study with other people who are also there with the purpose of studying. Like, I feel like that's the main thing that got me through. Yeah, it it, it really does help so much because uh, you're so much more committed to it and. Uh... So yeah. Even having to leave your house every day, it's yeah, because like... you're there. Like you're you're forced to make a plan, make have a plan for lunch. You know, take stuff for with sure. you, and then you also have an excuse. Well, like I'm here now, so let's get some stuff done. But yeah, yes. when you're at home, you especially just... the best thing is when you have time between classes. Like it's just like, all right, this is like yeah, let's get a little bit of head work on a project, or let's yeah. start up a group project, or yeah, talk to a teacher about something. Like it's it's so. When you're at home, you're just like, okay, well, let's open up Reddit. Uh, let's open up YouTube. <laughs> you just Basically. Before you know it, you didn't get anything that... Uh, yeah, I, it depends on your personality, though. Like, some people are great with that, but I, for me, I don't think it would have worked at all. Yeah. Um, it's a struggle, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, not too much maple, okay? <laughs> 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 I know what you're blowing your... St like, that's what I did on my first, uh, my first years of college. It completely blew it playing maple, but... That oh was mainly God. because I didn't like what I was studying mainly. So okay, I mean, yeah, it, it kind of works together, right? If the 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 prog the program isn't really captivating you, then you're just looking for other stuff to do instead, and then you know, for real, it does. Uh, there is a connection there. Um, okay, so did we get through all of the IED? That's like, uh, yeah, soul buff. That's a little. Passive hyper skills. You do have a passive hyper though, but you, I think you included that, right? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, because that's a frailty curse one. You don't have a passive hyper for um, for your attack skills, right? Um, there's showdown, and then there's the quad star. Yeah, but no IED there. I meant. No, no ID. Yeah, no ID. Okay. Um, level forty boost notes. So that's later. Uh, character specific. Yeah. So we talked about that. Oh, don't you? Oh, is that Night Walker who has like a. Yeah, Nightwalker has a debuff on the boss as well. Um, event buffs titles, we already talked about that. Guild skills, mm -hmm. uh, not sure if you want to go into that. Potions is later as well. Yeah, yeah. we can... Uh, I don't know. The guild skills, so we're at, like, level... I know, I, it's no bless points, so mm -hmm. I've been trying to get people to, like, do flag and come to GPQ. It's been a little bit of a struggle, but... Um, yeah, welcome to it, it, it works. <laughs> guild leaderhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There was one guy like yelling at me that I, why don't I have like all the points put into like crit damage that it's like much more valuable, but we were kind of like a 150 plus 160 plus guild and not everybody had crit. So I was trying to just do the generic damage for everyone's benefit. And yeah. then mm -hmm. also just like, I was like, oh, let's, uh, let's put some in IED because all of us are kind of coming up. We're all pre CRA and. We're working towards it, so yeah, that's so an I important thing to, to yeah, that's an important thing to communicate with your guild with and see where everyone is at and see what everyone needs. Um, for me now, for my guild, it's pretty simple. Like you, well, we have thirty-eight skill points, so we already have a lot more to work with, and yeah. it's like we can max out two skills, and then it makes sense. Everyone's uh, at the point where they have enough IED, so you just max out the the generic damage, so it works on both monsters and bosses. And okay, and then you max out the critical damage for because that is like very high efficiency one and then also for training what people can do is they can alternate between the damage and the crit damage so that they always have one of them up so that their kill speed when they're training Ooh, goes up as a, well that's a good thing yeah yeah um but there's definitely there can definitely be a point if you're like well the hardest you know the the team that's like carrying the guild basically and it's moving forward and making the most waves like they need ied then you know, and they're at guild PQ and showing up and earning those points, then, you know, they For have real. disproportionately, <laughs> they could decide where those points go. Um, but you definitely want to do, do want to get the feedback. The critical damage skill definitely is very good. But how many skill points do you get per week? Um, We've gotten 10 <laughs> mm -hmm. the past two weeks, but yeah. we had like 18 at one point, like one of the other weeks, and that felt really nice. Cause mm -hmm. we, it was just like a whole half an hour of uh, yeah. off. Of buff. Yeah, exactly. Um, the the reason why people would want the crit damage is because, yeah, if you have the 100% crit rate, the crit damage will give you the most damage increase. It's right. really, really, really and big. It, it was actually funny. It was a uh, it was like a bowman complaining, so he's already at like 100% crit. He just... Yeah. It, you know? 
<laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, but, uh, end game uh, archers stack to like two hundred percent critical damage almost. Oh yeah, because of a uh, vicious shot, it gets pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so both in bosses and in um, in mobbing, the crit damage is the best one if you have enough crit rate. But the I, th I can see how they would say like ID is kind of like your more your personal responsibility. Because it's harder to get crit damage early on because you get a lot of it typically from legendary gloves that's like where you start getting a lot of critical damage and that's much later so getting okay. critical damage early would disproportionately increase your damage by a whole lot uh but that does mean um yeah that, that does mean that you you have to communicate with everyone on that uh make sure that everyone's on the same page with that okay uh, if you have enough skill points, if you only have ten, I would probably just put them in crit damage and just and just leave it at that. But if you have more, um, do you want to do like seven in one skill, eight in another one? If you have fifteen, or do you just want to max one skill out, like you do? Um... I'd rather max one skill out because I feel like it's just like a headache to having two otherwise. Yeah, with two different cooldowns. But the way you can look at it exactly. is like let's say if you have a boss that takes you about fifteen minutes to do. Right, and then you uh, you level both of them. You can have the buff up for the whole boss fight, and then just mm -hmm. do another boss fight like an hour later, and then have them all again. Right, you can kind of space out your bosses throughout the day. But some That's people true. just want to get a coupon and do all the bosses in one coupon, and then the critical damage would be better again. Yeah, so that that is definitely a good conversation to have. But I would also mention like, hey, if you wanna have like a say in where the skill points go, then make sure you do your flag rates, make sure you do your check ins, and make sure for you show sure. up at guild PQ. That's where you you know. It's a democracy, yeah. but you know you gotta <laughs> you gotta put your uh, you know best best foot forward and show that you're like willing to put in the points. And if everyone starts doing that, because I think there's a very delicate balance of uh, in the beginning when you have a very very tiny guild and you get like ten skill points, but I think you can very quickly work your way up to getting twenty or even thirty. Um, yeah. And then between thirty and forty five or something, that takes a lot of progress. And getting mm, past it gets 45, really, like, competitive kind of. Yeah, and if you want to get more than 45, you need like a huge mass active guild with a bunch of 270s Jeez. doing like crazy hard bosses, and then that's like impossible. Because I think the lowest we ever gotten was 33, and then the highest oh. we've ever gotten was 42, and we're always kind of in between that. Okay, wow. Well. Yeah, because it depends on the rankings, right? This week we got okay ranking because a lot of people DC'd in the <laughs> in the guild PQ because it was yeah, yeah, pretty un that. unstable. Yeah, um, and we didn't DC that much, so it was okay. But yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's a that's. I, I, I a, think some of my guildmates just uh, DC'd from the game before PQ. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we had like go into the waterway first waterway like uh, someone crashed. My mom crashed before the actual boss fight, which is unlucky. Oof. Yeah, she's a pretty. Pretty big chunk of the damage plus benediction is really nice. So, mm -hmm. but you know, even with that, we got a little bit more points than last week, so we're like slowly moving forward. Which you know, that's a general thing, right? You don't want your you don't need your guild to explode. You just want to make sure you're no, no. on the on track it's, it's and moving forward. It's yeah. group progression. It feels nice. Yep, exactly. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that that's the thing about the guild skills, I would say. Um, okay. Yeah, so for, so that means that we're probably looking at a line of IED for you on your WSE at least, and then and then adding the familiars in, because if you look at the things, you didn't add your ambition, which is if it's close to ten, that means you get to eighty four, and then two familiars with fifteen, at eighty four is sixteen, one point five is two point four, uh, gets you to eighty six point four, leaves fifteen point. 15.6, 15% of 15.6 is like 2.25, gets you to 80, 88, almost 89, and then line of 40, and that's 4.4, gets you to the 93 we want. Yeah, so probably with still one line of ID. A 30% line would also be good enough, doesn't need to be a 40. Okay. Uh, and and then, that's, that's yeah. usually from like legendary rolls? Yes, legendary rolls. You can get it on okay. unique, uh, but typically legendary rolls. Yeah. Should I get my? I don't know, cause I know Princess No is best in slot for Night Lord, the mm -hmm. secondary. So I'm not sure how far away that is in terms of my progression. Um, so I'm not sure if it's worth getting the level 100 secondary to legendary right now. It's at unique already. So mm -hmm. what would you? Um, you're planning to make most of this progress with the um. 
Wait, can Night Lord still kind of scum the Princess No prequest stuff, guys, and still kind of blow through that quickly? Because Princess No is a little bit bugged right now, where the final boss fight tends to crash people a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of difficult to to rely on that. Like um, the Tengu or whatever? Uh, no, no, she like summons eels or something in the final fight. Oh. Um, and then Tengu is in, um, in Mushroom Shrine. Oh, okay. So it's like both, it's both Japanese content. Um, but then Princess No is in a different, uh, has a different pre-skill. You can't poison kill, but you can still Dark Flare the, um, the whale in phase one, right? With the counter damage. Oh, okay. Can. I see. Um, yeah, Night Lord kind of had the perfect kit where you can use the flare to counter the phase one. Basically, a lot of the monsters have, like, limited damage, so you just have to hit them a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Uh, mm -hmm. Which means if you solo, it takes forever, and if you're in a party, it's like kind of okay. Uh, but Night Lord had the flare in phase one, where you could basically just counter the damage, and it didn't it bypassed the damage cap, so you could just two shot him basically. And then all the other monsters would take damage proportionate to regular poison damage, so they would all, all get like two tapped as well. Wow. So you, you could blow through that very very quickly, which of course wasn't really how it was designed. <laughs> so after a okay. while, they 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 changed that. But um, so I can go for Princess No then. You could. Um, it seems that I think you can still kill the first one with the dark flare. The it's like a pink dodo, but I think the other ones you still <laughs> probably want to keep get a party with you so that you can get the pieces a little bit more timely. And you probably want to just take more people with you to to blow it up. I think at two fifteen at your current state, it's probably going to be pretty tricky to kill it quickly. Because um, if you said you did like a struggle run for hard hilla, she's definitely like a few sizes bigger than that. Okay. Wow. So it might be might be a bit too early. I don't think it's like a stretch to go for legendary on your current um, WSC first, and then okay. like circle back once you're doing like like hard Gollux or something, and then like okay. try to group up a party with people who are at that level, um, and then try to circle back. Yeah, I would say she's above CRA level. It's not like a super difficult boss fight, but you do want to blow her up quickly now because of the because of the bug, and she doesn't. Um, she doesn't really get bound. She she gets like stunned for like half a second, then just moves around again. So you can't also oh, you can't really just like bind and burst her. She get, tends to just break out of that pretty quickly because yeah, you know, she's like weird yeah. content. So I'm yeah, so content. I don't so I don't think it's it's a I don't think it's a bad thing to overinvest in your secondary emblem because even then Princess No like it's best in slot, but it's pretty min maxi, right? It's like five right, attack right. and some stat, yeah. I mean, this this emblem, like, even if it gets the legendary, like, I'm going to be using it for a long time, so, yeah, like, it's... exactly. You'll get your money's worth, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, okay, it was let's... actually, uh... Yeah? So, because of the 17 star yeah. thing coming up, the Oh, before, scroll... before we get fully into the equips, can we uh, yeah, sure. just go over your matrix real quick? Make sure that that's uh, on point. And then, you know, we have everything out of the way, and then we can fully jump into yes. all of the equips. Because I saw some, you unequipped your notes to kind of show what you had, I think. Yeah, I just wanted to show like the slots kind of, maybe I should have left it in there. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know, there's like a different setup for like mobbing and then bossing and then bossing with like, um, for like easy bosses or stuff. I just want to AOE, so I don't know, I didn't mm -hmm. want to make too, too many pictures. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. So you have eight, do you have eight slots available? Is that? Uh, one sec. That's why you covered these, I I assume. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Eight slots. Yep. Yeah, okay. And then, so you have five boost nodes that are somewhat leveled. And do you have like the perfect? The so perfect I sets don't combined? have any perfect tri nodes. Uh, my level fourteen is just quad star and night lord's mark. And yeah. then I have the two. There's I have like two level eights, which are basically showdown and quad star. Mm -hmm. So those I leave in both for mobbing and bossing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm kind of just like... So I was going to ask about that actually because I know... It, so it caps out at level 50 or plus 5. Plus 5? Yeah, 50, 50 plus 5. So yeah, 60 is like the hard cap. So you can get to 60 by going more than 5.5. Five. You could put a, a, like a level 10 node into... Uh, four different slots, and then get like okay. forty, and then twenty from the from the slots themselves, and then still get the sixty that way. Mm. Uh, but then if you go above level ten on those nodes, then what will happen is it'll stay at sixty. So then you want like consolidate again. Right. 
And of um, course, it comes with the, the cost of, of skill notes. So that's like what you have to worry right. about. Yeah. I'm kind of going for three. Uh, my plan kind of right now is to go for three at 15 and then like work on one to like 20 or 25. Mm -hmm. but, and like, just hope for like perfect trinode. Along the way. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm not sure if that's like efficient or I should just be going for two. Because I only really need a. Uh, I have like my main damage skills yeah. on like three, and then the other three are just kind of like secondary skills that you use like once in a while. Right, it's just Quad Star Assassin Mark Showdown, basically, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but because it's only three, that's why it's harder to find them, right? Because <laughs> it's more limited. For sure. You have so many more variants. You have like the Shadow Web and the that blue thing, whatever it is. Yeah. Um. Like yeah. garbage <laughs> yep. skills there. Yeah, it's very normal at this stage to have like a bunch of two out of threes, but no real perfect ones. Um, if the top skill, so the one that you visually see on the left side, if that yep. one is a skill that you eventually want in your boost node, then it's fine to level that up. It does kind of restrict you, but because if you're looking for six skills you could, and you're going to get those in four uh, nodes, that does mean that you're, you're already you're limiting yourself to starting with four out of this out of the six right so you're limiting your your options a little bit further okay um so the slower you commit to leveling up any node the least um the fewer shards you miss out on um but the slower your startup is but the faster you get to the end point basically oh, okay so it's trying to find like a middle ground i think it's okay to go for a bunch of uh, well not a bunch but like go for three two out of three nodes but once you start getting past like level eight level nine the efficiency of having like if you later have to extract it instead of being able to use it as a boost node for another node you, you do start to kind of feel um the lack uh, um the lack of transference of investment because if you can just oh, use okay. it as a boost node all the experience is transferred but if you have to extract it to shards it's really really inefficient you get like one sixth of your shards back or something it's really wow bad. that's rough yeah it's rough yeah so you see sometimes in these sessions you see people with like level 18 or something extra boost nodes to hit the max and it's like that's gonna hurt <laughs> in a yeah in a bit um if it's like level seven eight nine or something it's not too bad um it doesn't take like an insane amount of nodes to level up to that point so it's that's not that's not too bad um okay. but yeah the opportunity cost of course is that you cannot use um a certain um skill node but i think night lord is okay with that when you're bossing um, um yeah, yeah i'm fine with it for now like my setup is basically three boost nodes throw blasting um quad star decent sharp eyes decent speed infusion and then based on the boss either a bind um shadow walker so like the dark side yeah. or um last resort for like the huge extra burst huge extra burst yeah so shuriken is kind of like backseat there because the other ones just give more value yeah yeah shuriken is has got some good utility now right because you can stop it early and you can like choose where it goes but yeah, if the it boss does, yeah. if the boss teleports I, I feel or moves like so around, a, <laughs> like cost benefit, like w once I unlock more slots, for sure I'll put it in. Yeah, it's more of mobbing now, right? You just like if you're moving from left to right, you just throw it to yeah. the left behind you as you're moving further to the right, so yep. you can kind of kill both sides, yeah. Or kill an elite monster a little bit quicker <laughs> mm -hmm. if they get if they get all antsy. Yeah. So okay, so sharp eyes, speed infusion, and then. Um, Spread throw and the blasting and then the boost nodes. Yeah. Yeah. Four. Wait. One, two, three, four. And then uh, and then you add one, either a shuriken or, um. Yeah, that's scroll or last resort or the shadow walker. That gives you like final damage boost. Yeah. So it's um. It's for 30 seconds, 10% final damage. You can activate it again to half the duration, but increase final to 30. And then I think if you get hit during that time, you get extra 10% and 40% damage respectively. But I'm I'm not sure what the wording is exactly there. It's kind of... 30 seconds in between. Imitate. In, oh, initiates a form of stealth that is not cancelled by skills or attacks. Final damage increase on top or of... Sorry, you're stacks. talking about Shadow Walker or Last Resort? Oh, Shadow Walker, sorry, yeah. Last Resort is oh, like yeah. a extra incoming damage and lower uh, avoidability, right? Oh, you, you take more damage? Is that what it's saying? 
I think so, yeah. I think it makes you... Well, it's not as extreme in the beginning. When the skill first came out, it gave you, like, something crazy, like 120% final damage, but then you took, like, 300% of the damage or something, and it was just, wow. like, impossible for people to live. So they kind of oh. nerfed both those extremes a little bit. Okay, interesting. But I think you can, yeah, you can, like, activate it twice to get, like, the strongest effect, but then you do take a lot of damage, and you, I think you lose 100% of your avoidability, so you do get hit by everything guaranteed as well. Okay. The, that doesn't apply to uh, percent damage, right? Just the... Um, oh, like, that it takes... No, 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 yeah, yeah. It doesn't apply to percent damage. That it, Like, everything one-shots you or something? No, no. But everything does hit you at that, at that point, so you do have to be more careful. Right. Um... Yeah, so this is... Okay, so even at level 1, it's 10% final damage. The uh, the Shadow Walker. Mm -hmm. And then it goes up to 30... Uh, up to 16% final damage, but with a cooldown of 190 seconds. So that's quite a bit more uptime. Okay. But level-wise, um, when it comes to skill notes, you're probably trying to level your Quattro, I guess. Uh, your uh, Spread Throw, I mean. Um, I'm not sure. Either that or Throw Blasting. Throw Blasting seems like it does a lot of damage, but uh, Quad Throw is... I, I really don't know. I yeah, you can use... The two for sure. Yeah, you can use Throw Blasting twice, right? In the time you use one Spread Throw? Yeah. But Even if you, maybe three times. Maybe three? Dep yeah, it'll depend on if you're more solo bossing or more party bossing, I guess. Because if you're party bossing, mm -hmm. the whole party will kind of like <laughs> develop around like, okay, when is your Spread Throw up? And then, you, and then it's like, okay, you're up, dude. Throw, <laughs> throw your entire load into these next uh, <laughs> yeah. thirty seconds, and then, yeah. and then we'll hop around for four minutes until it's back, kind of thing. Uh, but if you're soloing, I guess the throw blasting is more important because it has way you can use it way more times, so it'll be more. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you you have it during mobbing as well, so it's mm -hmm. dual utility, kind of. Yeah, it's got like a passive effect, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But you, I, I even activate it during mobbing and then like yeah, yeah sure. everything's like blowing up yep yeah I'm, oh yeah if i'm it, not one shotting it yeah. lets me one shot usually. exactly because it aoe's around the the targets that you're hitting yeah yes and the um but if you use it during spread though it like runs out in five seconds right uh around yeah because it uses all, oh yeah or maybe six or seven but like all of the charges get used up super super quick mm -hmm. yeah sadly it would almost be cool if it like lost some of its cooldown if it gets used faster or something yeah, that would be that would be interesting. So that if you use it after a spread throw, that it the cooldown is only like a minute or so. Because mm -hmm. what is the standard? Is it ninety seconds? Or is it's it... last sixty seconds, and you get I think forty eight scrolls. Oh, 60. And you can it it does a maximum of four scrolls per hit. Mhm. Mm um, what's the the cooldown in between uses? Uh, one hundred twenty. One hundred twenty. Okay. So it's yeah. basically fifty percent uptime. Yep. Well, not like the yeah, you know, yeah. If you're yeah. mobbing, depending on how quickly, time, yeah, yeah, exactly. If you're bossing, it's more like ninety percent downtime. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it's immediately, yeah, immediately gone. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So depending on if you're mobbing and bossing, you have different steps. But that seems good. Yeah. But for boost notes, I would yeah, keep it maxed to like three to try to max out your um, your quad star most of all, of course, and then your mm -hmm. showdown and your assassin's mark. Try to keep those within three, um, okay. and then keep an eye out for. Anything that starts with one of your six skills, just keep all of those until you find like yep. the perfect mix and match. And then once you have the perfect mix and match, just level those up and then you can start getting rid of all of the other ones except for those four no nodes that you're keeping out. Okay. All right, equip time. Let's go. Well, we already talked about some of the stuff, so it'll basically be like a recap. Um, so that first screen is just options that you have. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, it's like, I wasn't, I know, I'm kind of like at a really confusing point where to go with my gear, because I know there's a lot of stuff you can do for like solo progression, mm -hmm. and like, uh, Von Leon obviously gets a lot better flames than Pencilier, mm -hmm. and uh, then I've been, lo I've been slowly collecting pieces of the Japanese set from Hard Ran Maru, mm -hmm. and... Oh my god, the set bonus for those is crazy, but I I don't know if I should invest into them because then they can't transfer into like CRA and stuff. And I I don't know, I'm kind of lost in terms of that. Mhm. Mm uh, the new set bonus is um oh, it's not called Sengoku. Uh what's it called? Ame. Ame no Uzume or something. 
And then also, I feel like part of it would have to like break my boss set a little bit, so I'm not sure like how worth that is. So it's like there's a lot of consideration. I feel. Mm -hmm. Um. But posts. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so the, the promise of good set bonus is nice, but I feel like you need a lot of pieces for the Sengoku yeah. gear before it really gets online, right? You're looking at at least yeah. six, I think. Before you're like, oh, this is really good. And then seven and eight and nine are really good, but... Mm -hmm. at, yeah, at that point, it comes at, the, at a huge opportunity cost of like all the other stuff as well. And then the major downside is that all of these pieces don't have uh, flame advantage except for the yes. for the weapon if you get the the other weapon and you need yeah. to get that weapon to get the nine set because you know you only have eight equips and that weapon counts for two um and then on top of that once you get your cra stuff immediately you're gonna replace the overall replace it yeah yeah uh, and the hat and then immediately the set bonus already starts deteriorating again so how much you really want to mm -hmm. invest into it if you're going to move away from it so if the That's three the thing i was yeah. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. If the three or four set bonus is like really nice, um, then you can use that to kind of build around. But since you need to basically block out all of the other set bonuses to get something started, I don't think the set bonus is worth it. And it's mainly okay. just good. Um, it's it's really good Star Force fodder to get to transfer into Abzo later. That's what it's really, really good for. And it's good okay. for extracting and getting a lot of Philosopher Stones. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that gets you some value and so like other... maybe gloves gloves boots are look, worth looking at and stuff yeah yeah but if you have other ones already that have good flames like this these von leon gloves like 66 yeah. luck with five attack that, that's really that's really solid i'll probably go for those um okay and then these are 130 so you could transfer hammer those into and later you know into 140 yeah. then into the same then into the remru gloves and then from there into um abzo gloves something like that okay Cool. That way you can transfer some of the value without, you know, starting off with zero and you can, yeah, maintain some of the value that you already invested. Awesome. Um, and the hat is pretty nice, although the Necromancer hat is way better, of course. Yeah. So, um, what is it on Leon's set bonus again? Uh, it's not that much. It's a bit of, like, boss damage, a bit of stat, and, like, I don't know, 10 or 7 weapon attack. Well, the first set effects is at four. The four gives ten percent boss. It's definitely better than necro. Necro, it's like three yeah. three set for five percent boss. Is like okay, that's not really. You're just looking at the individual stats of the equips there. Mm -hmm. Um, if you get the six set von Leon though, that's pretty nice. Um, that's without the weapon, or yeah, it seems like you have to get the weapon for the six though, so that's out the window yeah. immediately. So then we're looking at five is not that much better than four. So four von Leon could be something we go for for the ten percent boss over, okay, over um, that. But we definitely want to throw the necro gloves in there so we can look at the other flames and see kind of how they compare. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, the necro hat. I mean, um, yeah, we can do without the flame on the shoe is also really nice though. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing as well. I'll, like, I'll let you take a look at the other equips as well. But mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm kind of not sure where to go for the 5, 10, 15. I have like five and a half bill saved up right now. Mm -hmm. Which I know isn't isn't a lot, but it could get me a little bit of In your stage, it's quite a bit of money. That's pretty good. You can get a lot of stuff done with that. If you spend five and a half bill well, you can probably double your damage. Wow. Um... Yeah, if most of your stuff is unique and you spend it at the right places and like stop. The main thing is stopping at the right time and not aiming too high. That's like a big oh, okay. mistake people make early. They were like, oh, I'll get to legendary. I'll try to go for three line attack. And then yeah. it's like that's not happening with that money. And then you're yeah. stuck with something way worse. And then you could have made like 100% luck over all of your other equips combined with the same amount of money. and You'd be way stronger. So oh, okay. that's like... Um, well, that's why these like sessions are Like, if you get, like, two line, two line attack or something on a unique, like, you can kind of chill on it. Oh, yeah, that's, like, yeah, that's definitely chill territory. Um, or for, or like, stuff that's already legendary, if you like, have, like, a line of boss and some attack, or maybe even a line of attack and some stat, or two lines of attack, or a line of IED and some attack. Like, all of these are very, very good right. outs compared to all the other stuff you have, and then getting all the mm -hmm. other stuff to epic and start forcing it up, maybe getting some okay flames, all of that combined will net you way bigger gains than going too hard on one or two items. Okay. 
Oh, actually, regarding flames, um, I'm not sure at all what, to, like, I just get a bunch of flames because I have, like, the two spider familiars, and I get a bunch of flames from bosses, and I have no clue what to use it on right now. You have the old spiders I... for drop? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, they don't stack with each other. Oh. If that's something okay. you, yeah, so they, um, they each have their own effect, but since they have the same effect, like, um, for similar lines, just the biggest percentage applies. So if you have both of them oh, okay. out, you'll notice on the top right, you only have one buff icon. Uh, so I can use, I'm feel, I'm free to use another familiar yeah. with them. Yeah, like okay, a healer cool. or whatever, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Uh, whatever has the most defense, right? So you slow down your, yeah. your gauge depletion, yeah. Uh, I made like exclamation mark uh, drop rate command for uh, like how that all stacks and what all the percentages are of everything. So you can take that into account when you're trying to um, determine like what the best setup is. Yeah. Um, um, but what I wanted to ask with the flames, like I'm not sure, should I be, I know like the flame score and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure, should I be... And I know how there's like the early game goal, like the mid game goal. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, should I be like using that stuff on my like pencil ear for now or just like kind of trickling it down to my mules to slowly like raise them? Because I feel like my gears flames are okay for like where I am and they're not like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you're... Yeah, okay. yeah, well, rule number one is never flame pencil ear. That's just a giant fucking waste. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, oh. that's... They, they don't have... You know about flame advantage, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so they are level 140, but they don't have flame advantage, so your average mm -hmm. outcome is just going to be terrible. It's like a waste of your flames, definitely, at this point. Okay. The main things you yeah, want to use them on is, you know, like, desperately trying to get some attack on your weapon, which you got that, so that's good enough. And then the other stuff you want to use it on is, like, once you have your CRA or things that have flame advantage that are going to stay with you quite a bit longer. So that's like the Golden Clover okay. Belt, but this one has a good flame. But like to get something like what the Golden Clover Belt has, uh, your Pink Holy Cup, um, that's probably also good enough Like to get something like this on there. Um, and then the other stuff um, that has flame advantage would be, yeah, would basically be the gear that you have, like the Necro and the Von Leon. But if you, okay. if you keep that long enough, uh, or you keep doing that long enough, you get stuff with good flames there. So you basically get free flame rolls. Um, what you could flame, I th think, let's see if I remember all the stats, I think is your earring? The de deicitis? Yeah. Okay. It's, this one is okay, because the attack power kind of saves it. Um, yeah. but this is like if you're looking for things to flame, right? Um. Okay. So, would I work on like a secondary earring, like same one for now? Like, I wouldn't, I would keep that one as it is, mm -hmm. just so, it, would that be valid, or... Um, because ten, uh, ten star star force and epic isn't that much of a hassle. I feel. Mm -hmm. And um, what would the goal be of the second earring, though? Kind of just to like, not um. Uh, inconvenience myself with like less damage on the one I have right now. But I don't. I'm not sure if that's worth it. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think that's worth it. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. You're not gonna get a down area. I mean, you're kind of just like holding out until you get the CRA stuff. Because once you have good flames, let me go over this. Because we do wanna, we don't wanna move away from the pencil here, but we're not like completely uh, neglecting the pencil here. Because some of the stuff has like six and nine percent stats, so we don't wanna switch over to something that has better flames, but then spend a bunch of money to get yeah. the same potential and end up roughly the same right. level of strength, right? Um, that's not what we want to do. Looks like she was 10%. Basically. Um, yeah, it's kind of unlucky that your hat is 9%. <laughs> yeah. The other hat is like really, really good. I could definitely get... That's the one I would invest in, but your current hat already has 9. Um, that does mean, though, that... You'll make a small upgrade moving into... Because the one thing is that you're, visually it might look like your range is going down, but that's because the set bonus of Pencil layer of damage to normal monsters goes into your visible damage range. But it doesn't apply oh, to... Oh, it does? Yeah, but it doesn't apply to bosses. So that's kind of misleading okay. on how much... Because that's 20% damage that it looks like you have. But when you're fighting bosses, you don't have that. 
Wow, okay. And that's another reason why you don't want to look at the damage range too much, because it's a little bit <laughs> misleading in, in that regard. Okay. So uh, when I told my friends I was close to one mil clean range, I was lying? Um, well, technically <laughs> not, because that's if you if you just if you just um, do the prefix of saying that it's your visible range, then that's fine. <laughs> okay. Because that's yeah, I mean, people when you say range, people imply visible range, and that's kind of what still people use, but it's just not a really good indicator to to use. But for your own personal milestones and stuff, it still can be like you know something that you're aiming towards, so it can have a function that way. Yeah. But yeah, but when it comes to damage output, it's not very reliable in that sense. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to... Man, your penciler stuff is already pretty good. Um, have you done anything with CRA already? Like, like try to go in the run and see like what happens? I've I've tried Vaughn, Bon, mm -hmm. but um, I think my ping was a little bit high, or I was like... Uh, There's been lag in the last my, weeks. My yeah. duck too hard, like too early, and I was kept getting like one shot by the thing, which like I, I shouldn't have been doing. It's not that hard to dodge. The laser? Yeah, you can also jump over it, right? Flash jump over is, yeah. is sometimes way safer. You have more room to move in the air. And then sometimes what I... he also does, if you stay at range, is he'll like go up in the air with his with his ground kill while the, yeah. the, the thing is also flying around. And if you're ducking, you have nowhere to go and you just die. Oh, okay. And sometimes he combines it with a teleport as well. Like he'll, hmm. he'll place like the, the mirror image of you where he's going to teleport you. And then he'll shoot a laser in that way, and then he'll teleport you into it right then. And then you want to... Wow. At that point, you do want to hold the down arrow, because then, if, even if the timing is perfect, you should come out ducking and go right underneath. Okay. But yeah, depending on your range, he might do that, and then and then go into his up attack when you're... like, And then all three <laughs> will happen at the same time. Oh my so, god. But it depends on your range of him. So there's like a sweet spot of range where the the time that the the projectile takes to get to you... And the amount of time he has in between his attacks to be able to use the 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 get up attack to kill you if you're on the ground. Um, yeah. If you're a little bit closer than that, you, the attack will already pass. And if you're a little bit further than that, you can jump over and the attack won't hit you yet. But there's like a sweet spot where ranged classes have to be a little bit careful for. Okay. But is the, it, is it normal to use uh, buff freezers when going into like CRA and stuff? In the beginning when you're practicing, yeah, for sure. If you go practice mode and you have one buff freezer, it doesn't consume it, so you can just use yeah. it. Um, yeah, that's what I, that's how I would start, yeah, to get a feel for the boss and to, to know what the fuck you're doing. Because there's a lot of stuff. Okay. Everything is new in the beginning, so you're going to have to die to everything twice to figure out how it exactly works. And that, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Because, you know, the rebuffing is a huge hassle and it's like... You don't oh, have the resistance link so skill time. yet, and then you, you'll just die while rebuffing, and then you have to go again. And it's, yeah. Exactly. Especially if you weren't like expecting the death, and then I feel like I get all like flustered, and then something else kills me. And, <laughs> I don't know. Or you get those rage, those rage respawns where you're like, fuck, and you respawn, <laughs> and then boom, and you're instantly dead again. It's like, okay, that was a bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should not have done that. Yeah. No, we've all been there. It's fine. Because uh, I'm almost thinking. Um, since your ep your stuff is all already epic and lined, um, if all of your pencilier was like just rare and stuff, I would definitely move mm -hmm. into all of the von Leon and the uh, and the necro stuff because some of those flames are really nice. Like the hat is okay. insanely good, right? Um, but it almost feels like a sidestep instead of a step forward at this point. Right. So I don't think CRA is that that far out. So maybe just hold mm -hmm. on to pencilier for now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think the main okay. thing is going to be getting the IED familiars and rerolling uh, the secondary for sure. Yeah. Uh, would and then you, getting would the you legion. Star on. the pencil here right now, or sixteen star with the event, because it's going into CRA. I'm not a huge fan of star forcing pencil ear. Um For stuff that you could transfer, maybe. So that would mean the hat and the. And the overall? Yeah. Do you have another overall or do you have just the one? Um like a pencilier overall? Yeah, like an epic one with some with some Star Force as well or I actually I I very much so do, and I think it's like it's six percent lock. Like I just ID'd it. It was epic and it was like six percent lock. Nice. Because so, you can transfer uh, hammer it one into the top and one into the bottom. Overall oh, okay. overall doubles his value. So if you Star Force two overalls and a hat that would be good value that as soon as you get CRA, you could just transfer hammer it over and you will immediately have um, good CRA 16. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What's, uh, do you know, I know, 
Like, do you know the generic cost of going to maybe like 15 star or 16? Um, I use the the Star Force calculator for that. Yeah, I don't okay. know. I think it's like on level 160 stuff. It's like 800 or something to get up to 15, and then 600 to get to 17, something like that. Okay. And should I maybe um, should I farm up some like extras and then just go without safeguard or? For penciler, yeah, never safeguard penciler. Ever. Okay. That's okay. like the biggest waste of money because all of the value is in the in the, gets gets brought back into the trace. So if it does blow up, and you can get infinite backups like instantly. So just right. get some backups and never never safeguard that stuff. Okay. Twelve to fifteen. Well, let's say up to sixteen, I guess. Yeah. Um, for well, the, level two yeah, hundred. Okay. I was like, what the fuck? That's way too high. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so it's like three to four hundred mil per item. Oh, that's not bad. What the hell? So like 1.2 bill for those three. And that will get you 15 stars CRA. And then you can get just get the 15 to 16 on the on the CRA. That's like 50 mil each. Yeah. So you're looking at 1.4, you, uh, 1.5 bill. Would you say it's worth investing in 16 star in my uh, ghost ship badge? Um. So past 15 badges don't get attack or stat so you i would just get it to 15 when there's a 30 percent off okay um and then just leave it there until literally all the other stuff is beyond <laughs> and like is at yeah. 17 and then do that one last to 17 because it just gets the lowest gains okay uh, other stuff that's more important but that's when you're looking more forward is like your belt for example because that one can transfer hammer right into the superior belt once you get that Okay. So that one, yeah, has like the lowest amount of value lost when moving on. Like the golden clover can go into. Yeah, the... yeah, because okay. it's one forty, it's superior is one fifty, so it just uh, goes over Actually, nicely. Actually, oh my god, that specific golden clover, um, I wanted to cry because I transferred it into a Japanese thing. Ooh. Um, because I had two, and both of them were Star Force with like Epic, and I I mm -hmm. clicked the wrong one. Oh. But so you the lost other the ones... flame. <laughs> Yeah, but the other one's still like. One sec, let me see. Um, the one's like five percent stat, twenty luck. So it's okay. Yeah, it's not that much worse. Yeah. When you have uh, when you star force one, uh, they have an indicator now that shows if the item is equipped or not. Oh, okay. So is it look like up. an E next to it or something. Uh, I think, or a U for in use or something. Oh, I can't use it. Okay. In this. Mode. I'll I'll look out for that. No, I can't use it in this in this area. But yeah, it has like a they, they added an icon now, so you can see if it's if it's being equipped or not. So that hopefully that will make enough of a difference to show, so you don't transfer the wrong one. Yeah. But yeah, always hover over the. You can always hover over the stats of the items on the top right to see like which one it is and what the outcome is going to be, to double check. Okay. Always do that. Um. Yeah. Yeah, you have a lot of stuff. Yeah, so 5, 5, 10, 15 is a great to get stuff from 15 to 15 and beyond. Uh, like, from yeah. 50, from 15 beyond. Ideally, the event that you're looking for is like a 30% off to just boost everything to 15. Oh, okay. So, Th maybe that, right now I can work on 12 for everything? Um, I would work... Uh, well, I would work on the hat and the overalls just to have that ready because you, I think you are pretty close to CRA and getting those things to 16 will help a little bit as well. Yeah. Uh, and then you can transfer immediately once you get because the three door is going to be significantly easier than vellum So then mm -hmm. you have the pieces you can immediately upgrade immediately incorporate the CRA and the 50 extra attack You get from that set bonus into your kit and then use that power immediately to get vellum down Okay, and that um, combined with I, the it, extra IED I think will be enough just with practice and with the right team members and good communication right. um, That should be enough Okay so I wouldn't I'm probably go, gonna buy a yeah? item guard for the other overall I do, just so it's in my inventory because I don't want to sell it accidentally. Yeah, I don't know if that blocks your ability to transfer hammer it later though. I'm not sure if that how that works. Uh, it, I think it's 90 days, and I'm I I'm not sure if you can take it off or not. Um. Yeah, I don't know either because I think people do it so that if other people break into their account that they can fuck with their yeah. equips. So if you could take it off, then that would kind of bypass that whole aspect of it. So I'm not sure how that works. I would look right. into that before you do that. You don't want to have like, okay, <laughs> now you have the CRA gear and now you can't transfer hammer because it's guarded. Right, and if you wait right. 90, 90 days to upgrade your CRA, that would be, that'd be <laughs> unfortunate.
I would. Uh, so, did you get most of the pencil gear from, um, like, boss, um, like, elite boss things and runes um, of riches and stuff? Did you get it as I epic, think, or did no, you No, I, I never really did those. I didn't even know that... I thought you had to actually manually pick up the runes of riches stuff, so I just kind of, like, avoided it. I didn't oh, know you I could see. just run into it. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah. Most of my stuff, I think, is from Horntail, Pink Bean. Okay. And I've just done so many of those that <laughs> I've ran into... Good yeah, RNG. yeah, that's yeah. You've done a lot of your bosses. That does mean your ambition is probably pretty high up as well. Mm -hmm. So ideally, the kind of like the stats that you end up looking for in your weapon, the secondary and emblem, is that the emblem takes care of a line of ID and then the rest attack, and then yeah. your your secondary attack and maybe a line of boss, and then your weapon hopefully goes like full attack. That's usually the the distribution of the of the rolls there. Um, okay. You do have the twelve percent crit on your emblem. Um, if you have ways of getting into the crit, like with the Phantom Link instead, um, yeah. just using can... one of your free slots there for the Link skill and then re-rolling the Emblem okay. um, so that you can rely for the ID from the Emblem instead would be preferable over getting the ID on your secondary because eventually you want to roll out of that again and you can kind of skip an extra unnecessary step that way. Okay, that sounds really good actually. Yeah, so Phantom Link and then roll Emblem for a line of, uh, a line of damage and a line of ID. And then I would uh, get the, you can get the secondary to legendary if you want. And then line of boss, line of attack would be like what you want on there. Yeah. Because boss damage is definitely also going to help you disproportionately because your boss damage is quite low. And then all of the rest is going to come. Oh, I'm memory leaking again, aren't I? You know, fucking Chrome, bro. Look, there's just <laughs> one source in Chrome here using up 27, 28% of my processor and 3 gigs of my RAM. What the hell? And I just close it. And my whole stuff stops lagging and nothing closes. Everything's fine. <laughs> it's so weird. Um, but yeah. Um, computer stuff. Um, the rest is going to come from your Legion, your links, that building that up. A lot of IED, crit rate, um, and boss damage are going to come from that. And I think those those main three things, and then a little bit of the star forcing damage, um, combined with practice and the bosses, I think is going to help you be able to bypass the whole... Um, because your pencil is already so good, I think it's gonna yeah. bypass this. And like ideally, um, you probably want to equip like the the necro hat and the the von Leon gloves, and you know get like those to six or nine yeah, percent. Yeah, like while get, doing CRA. Yeah, to, to make CRA easier. Um, yeah. Because then, if all of that was upgraded to the same level as your pencil was, then you'd be a little bit stronger. But right now, it's such an upgrade sideways when you're you know already this close to CRA and you're. For real. Yeah. So maybe the uh, maybe the gloves and the but yeah, you're looking at the you're kind of looking at the at the minus range still, right? You're seeing like this is the amount of yeah. stuff you have to upgrade before it even gets at the level. If something is like the pendant where it's like 4K lower and you haven't done anything with it yet, then you're like, okay, this can definitely be an upgrade once I'm done. But if something is 20K, 30K lower and you and you still have to overcome that and then go over. You still really right. want to wonder, like, is this worth? Um, is this going to be worth the investment? Mm -hmm. Also, I uh, I got a Dominator pendant drop yesterday. Um, oh, that's the thing that you can flame then. All your flames okay. go there for now. Yeah, especially the ones okay. that are like blinking and bound to expire. Use that. Yeah. Once you have CR8, that'll be higher priority because it's higher level item. Um, but if you're looking for anything to flame, go for the Dominator now. All right, sick. So yeah, I was gonna mention that, but I was gonna, I was assuming there that you wouldn't be getting those just yet. But there you go. Yeah, no, <laughs> my yeah, bad assumption dropped. on my side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, well, congrats on that, dude. It was a pretty, thank uh, you, thank you. Pretty rare to get, so. Okay. Um, what does my OBS audio look different now? It's so weird. Okay. Um, Yes, so that's like specifically equip wise. Um, was your badge at two lines, nine and six? My badge, one sec. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, yeah, that's a nine and six. Yeah, okay, so that's really nice. Um, and badge. so yeah, would I would I keep that for a while now? Like I can. Yeah, that? compared to all the other stuff, yeah, for sure. Um, 
Yeah, the main thing after that, if you're if you're relying on your if you like the mobbing on your night lord a lot and you're relying on your income just from your night lord, I don't think you're gonna be making like a kind of farmer and everything like that. No, no. Um then the next step after all of that stuff and moving into the CRA, getting that hopefully to seventeen and getting like good um um, getting the flames up a little bit and then um, you want to keep it at you can go up to unique but you want to keep it at the highest potential at unique for a while your CRA because you gain a lot of junk lines at legendary and it gets disproportionately oh, okay. very expensive to get good lines in legendary so keeping that unique mm -hmm. is like financially more efficient um, from from yeah after that um, you'd want to well, you want to get a good lines on your weapon, right? Because the extra 30 boss and then flame advantage. So get a good flame on your weapon. That's going to be important. And then the potential on your weapon. And then after that, it's all going to come down to your accessories uh, moving up. So your earring, iron face, two pendants, and all of your rings. Those nine equips. And those, tearing those up into like mezzo obtain, drop rate, and some luck. Any combination with that. So you want to ideal situation... The, the budget ideal situation is having just five lines of mezzo and four uh, and four lines of drop rate between the nine equips. Okay. And then the upgrade from that would be to also have a line of 6% all set or 9% luck with all of them so that you don't lose too much damage in that whole you know, chunk of equips. Okay. Um, and then the upgrade from that would be maybe one or two items have a double line of mezzo and drop. And then you kind of compensate, uh, but you keep at max five for mezzo and then as many drop as possible that you can add. So four would be okay. the default and then more would be better there. The drop rate to make so, sure that you get more bags and then also that you make get more nodes and droplets and that kind of stuff. Okay. And then, uh, so you kind of like do everything to like one level and then you work on like one thing at a time, right? Uh, what do we mean by one level? Like a tier of potential like, so, or? Like, yeah, same thing. So like if you go from like, you get all your gear from like rare to epic and then you like roll it for, like one at a time to like six percent then you go like one to unique right and so at this at, when you're from this point going to there i would go one equip at a time um yeah. and just um set, try to get one item from epic straight up to legendary and then oh wow um, okay. yeah because once you get legendary and you get the mezzo obtain or the drop rate that'll immediately increase your rates and it'll make it faster for the next item to get back. So if you first invest to get everything up to unique, there's a big initial investment there that'll give you more stat, but it won't okay. give you any of the utility that you're looking for in drop rate and mezzo. Mm -hmm. So if you go one at, uh, one at a time item up instead and you get the drop rate or mezzo, then the next item you can do is faster and the next one you can do is faster and faster and faster and they speed right. each other up. So if I if I land on like drop rate or meso on my uh, event ring right now from like the free cubes, mm -hmm. I can sit on it. Yep, you just sit on that. And if you okay. if it adds a little bit of luck, that's perfect. But just whatever you get is fine. And then once you get six or seven items in, you might see that you have maybe six of them have meso or something. So then you yeah. go back. You you look at any kind of ring that has meso and that doesn't have luck with it, and then you try to re-roll that one with red cubes. Okay, sick. And then, um, yeah, that, that solid foundation is going to just make you make more and more money because you're relying mostly on your damage. You're going to be relying on symbols and like leveling up your symbols in the new areas and in your yeah. on your nodes. That, that's where a lot of your damage is going to come from. So okay. you don't want to heavily rely on your equips that much so that once you start upgrading your equips very heavily to even higher star force and to getting it to legendary and stuff, then you can feel a, that huge increase. And, and your legion mm -hmm. on side as well. Your legion on side is also going to make you a bit stronger okay i have uh one question regarding like the uh the event shop mm -hmm. so i have seven thousand two hundred coins like saved up right now mm -hmm. and i've already bought out all the symbols and the nodes from the first shop mm -hmm. um should i be also going for the same thing in the third shop and like what should i kind of use leftover stuff on um, are there any more so nodes are like super priority are there any more nodes in any of the shops uh the third tier shop which i think we get next week or something mm -hmm. has a bunch of node boxes it has a bunch of symbol boxes and then um i don't know there's like honor xp and there's like a whole bunch of cubes in the second tier shop so i'm not sure if i should be using those on like my gear and stuff and mm -hmm. um... i was wondering where yeah so yeah, I'm, I'm going on my kind of real, real quick to check out the shops just so I can see the numbers. Um, 
there's you know, there's flame here. Note some boxes. 700 and you can do five so that's three and a half thousand i would definitely prioritize that uh when it comes to symbol boxes do you think you can get to lacaline by then i think i by next week well by the end of the event right because you can still sit on the oh. coins oh i think i could for sure yeah um i don't know i i have this weird thing where like i don't like using um I don't like using my totems without ha knowing there's like an MVP train happening, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I guess I should get used to not using it because like there could just be no MVPs at all, right? Yeah, the so... reason I usually don't rely on MVP is because going over there and, and CCing around usually crashes me. So I just get used oh, okay. to not... <laughs> I, I Like if, a, if I see an MVP announced, I'll be like, okay... Do I have the next two hours available? I see an MVP. Okay, I'm going to do two hours now. And then at least right, I have right. it for the first half hour. Because then the risk of the CC, uh, DCing mm -hmm. is pretty low. Because um, the way the state that the servers are currently, I'm not trying to risk you know losing all my buffs and losing all my potions and, and maybe and perhaps losing your map. You know, it's a little too much. So, yeah, that that it, we talked about it like a few days ago. But it depends on where you put your baseline. Yeah, if you put your baseline on like always having totem and always having full MVP, then everything else is gonna feel kind of bad. So you have to be right. careful for that that you don't kind of make yourself too uh not jaded but what's the word where you're like mm -hmm. uh spoiled right you don't spoil yeah, yourself too yeah, much with, with those rates because then you, you sure. make it harder for yourself to to get over that initial threshold of like investing the time to train yeah that's the thing too waiting for mvp is kind of like i kind of have to be like paying attention to chat a little bit whereas if i uh i just told him whenever i have two free hours available i think mm -hmm. it could be good and mvp is like an opportunistic thing on top of it yeah, it depends also if you if you notice that you're waiting, but then at the end of the month you're like, oh shit, I have six totems left and three more days. Like, now I'm like, I fuck myself because yeah. that was too much pressure. Then maybe you have to be a little bit more free with that. But if mm -hmm. the way that you're doing kind of works and you kind of always have like one or two totems maybe max at the end of the month and you can just finish those up and that's not too much pressure, just kind of find yeah what level of of being picky works for you, I guess. Yeah, it could depend also on the hours that you play. Some people just don't have the luxury because there's no MVPs going on at the time that they're playing and then other people maybe yeah, for are doing the peaks so yeah it can depend on that the main thing is going to be for the shop is to max buy out Lacaline once you get there because okay. because that has a rough startup with Dream Defender uh, uh. And, and the daily income is pretty low early on so if you can max boost that that's going to give you a huge amount of extra stat and um, okay. also help you reach that 50% final damage to the monsters in there so you don't lose too much kill speed when you mm -hmm. move in. Are the pre-quests fairly, like, like one hour, two hours or something for... Oh, yeah, for the, the storyline in the area. Yeah, it's not um, it's not too long and it's not too bad. The later areas, storylines get a little bit longer and are a little bit harder because you have 15 level difference between the monsters there when you, and when you get wow. to the area. So you lose a lot of damage on the higher level areas. That's crazy. Yeah. The, so you the... were doing like, what, 20% of your damage or 30% of your damage? Uh, it's yeah, it gets pretty bad. Yeah. So that's why you want to solidify your symbols in the early areas so you don't take okay. too much of a hit there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ar yeah Arcana I guess I'll, can be rough. I'll rush Lachlan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that's um, so that's like how much can you spend in the earlier shop on more Lackland symbols? Because that's another oh, let me check. two and a half k here. So three and a half, two and a half, and three and a half on nodes and Lackland symbols. So that's six k. Yeah, and then I think we're getting an event next week or something, or like every day you log in, you get bonus coins, and then like day five you get like five hundred, and day ten you get like a thousand or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, yeah also, there's I, also the experience node zones, which are pretty good, but they're a thousand each. It's quite steep. Okay. Oh, uh, also regarding those, I'm not sure. Am I at a point where I should be saving those for uh, true or acted reflection at all, or no? I shouldn't worry about that for now. I think that's too early. I would focus on getting your, your prime damage um, skill nodes leveled up with them first. Okay. That'll Because that'll get you up to the point where you're able to even think about you leveling that skill that skill is very very good for a long time at level one you're mainly okay. using it to like optimize your burst when you're going like <clears throat> beyond hard lucid is basically when you're looking at higher level oh, true okay. regular reflection so it's, <laughs> that's that's like so far yeah that's a pretty yeah it's pretty far away yeah okay 
Um, yeah, so between the, the Lacanine symbols in the store and then the box later and the notes on box and then possibly the experience notes, you're already looking at um, like 9k in the last chop alone. And you could go more, probably wouldn't go more um, Choo Choo or Vanishing Journey symbols at that point. Probably would focus more on like the event ring uh, cubes and stuff like that at that point. Okay. That sounds good. Um, yeah. Uh, wait, how many how many symbols can you buy in the earlier shop still for Lacaline? Uh, I it's the same amount as the others. I don't know. I don't have access to it yet. But I'm one sec. Let me move to the area. Dude. Um. So you can. Oh, I don't know how much it is per world. I've already bought them out. It just says zero for me. Uh, yeah, but you haven't been able to, oh yeah, yeah, okay, because you bought out the, the earlier areas, yeah, so you, yeah. you can see, is it, tw is it 50? I think it was 30 each or something. Wait, where is this NPC? What am I missing? It's the guy in the middle, it's Bike Gong. Oh, uh, chat is saying 50. Yeah, 50, and then they're, they're probably 50 each. Uh, no, not 50 each, sorry. 30, like five. 30 coins each, so 1,500. Uh, they right. might be more expensive, because I think the, the the lower two, I think, are 30, and then the other ones are 50, and then the other ones are 70, I think. Oh, wow. So okay. I think it would be 2,500, probably. Yeah, so you're looking at 9.5, uh, and then whatever you have left on cubes, something like that. Yeah, so 50 okay. Lacaline symbols, 5 Lacaline boxes, 5 Nodestone boxes, and 3 Experience nodes. And then left over at, you know, whatever gives you the best value at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about, like, buying out the droplets and stuff. That's probably a little bit... <laughs> I mean, eventually it might come into play. If you do have the money lying around, it might be a good investment, but... It is... What is it? Five bill to buy out all of them out? Is it? Um, I think so, right? 50 mil each, 50 of mm. each, so 100. That's that's for Arcane Umbra? Yeah, for Arcane Umbra, yeah. But that's like, what level is that? Like 240 plus or 260? Um, if you train and you can get the pieces, um, some people buy their own pieces like around like late, uh, like mid to late 240s. It could depend okay. on if you're in a boss fight and you can get and you can get a drop. Then some people just you know have it earlier. Some people are on their second or third character. They just get carried because they exchange with you know carrying someone else because they're so strong. And then you know they can get it a little right. bit earlier. But um, generally, it takes you a while to get enough droplets. So this is this is like a fast track to uh, to getting the high level one. And be, and of course, like if you could get your weapon, that would be a lot of weapon attack increase. It makes your flame more efficient. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but also the weapon is the most expensive item to make, it takes over 200 droplets, so if you're just well, looking at it from making them yourself, um, it is something to think about, but yeah, if you want to buy both of those out, it's 5 bill. Okay. I, I think I'll take a look at it after the 5, 10, 15, and once I've worked on stuff, see how I am financially, because, I mm -hmm. mean, Ursus and Maple Tour makes you a lot of money over time so yeah it does and you don't have that much to start for it's like if you get the pencil to 16 transfer over and get your CRA to 17 i wouldn't really go far beyond that you could do something like maybe get your earring and your belt up to 17 yeah because they stay with you pretty long and the belt transfer hammers over and the earring is you know gonna either become damage set or or drop set depending on how the potential turns out okay um but aside from those you probably don't have like you have your ring right yeah. That you could start for us. Oh, the the top one is like the superior Gallux. Like yeah. I, yeah, you can yeah. get you yeah, you can safeguard that one up to seventeen. But aside from that, you're not working on on too much. Do you have Daenerys for the the tattoo? Um, I, and I have like fifty or something, but like I don't know, I've been lazy with uh mm -hmm. I've been lazy with like Commercy and CPQ. I'm not sure because I know somebody said like, oh, this face is only good after like 17 star, and that's if you have like a bad flame on like the Sweetwater face. 
Yeah, once you well, so it's 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 twofold. So once you get past fifteen, then this the extra bonus stats on the tattoo and the monocle really start coming in and start replacing the Zakumayan phase. Yeah. Um, but they do have poorer flames, so that's why you need to wait. So that's why it takes so long for them to get better. But the other thing is that once you start moving more into the superior Gallic set, that's when the boss accessory set also starts falling apart. So the set bonus gets a lot smaller, so that becomes easier to replace at that point. Okay. Um, oh, I actually also have a I have like a full cracked Gallic thing, and that's another f source of like fifteen percent ID. Is that worth looking into for CRA? Um, that also feels like kind of like an upgrade sideways, sideways? instead of forward. Okay. Yeah. So I would just focus hard on on just getting those levels and getting those other bosses in, so that you can start after CRA and stuff. You can see if you can start doing hard looks and start practicing that. And then maybe if you have, have like a group of people who can do hard looks together, maybe you can you can party Helix, something like that. But you're okay. looking at being like level 220, 225 at least, all of you, before you mm -hmm. can uh, before you can start trying that because Helix does have a lot of HP. Yeah. And he has those wonky mechanics as well that you have to get used to and work around. But you know, with okay. domain and with uh, with potato killers, it, it, Nightlord has a good kit though. So if you have like the time, you can. Uh, do one limb down, assassin's marks can fly around and kill the potatoes. Yeah. Uh, and you can attack from a distance, so you definitely you have the kit to be able to, to do some damage to him for sure. Okay. Um, and Chaos Zakum is usually like post CRA as like a group, kind of, or? Um, yes, yeah, some people can do it before CRA, some people do it after. He's just like. The ping in GMS is just so bad that a lot of times you just get hit by something that you already dodged like three seconds ago and you still die to it. And oh, it's just wow. it's just really infuriating. So most of the time people just go and just once they can burst them down they go <laughs> kinda of, kinda of thing. <laughs> okay. You don't want to deal okay. with those wonky mechanics. I get you. So it's it's kinda like, like normal arc. Mechanics yeah, fight. yeah. Like arc, right? Where you in the beginning yeah. you, you don't really want to engage with those mechanics. You just wanna wait until you have enough damage to just like bind and just like shit all over him, basically. Okay. Yeah, same thing with Sakura. I mean, that basically only be for the cape, right? As a intermediary transfer hammer for your current one to the Absolab. Yeah. While you use the Tyrant, hopefully, after uh, uh, yeah, after C Val and stuff, then you can start doing H Mag with the party, and then you can get the mm -hmm. Tyrant cape there. That's a nice upgrade. And then you just okay. hold on to this one oh. to transfer hammer over. Is uh, what's it called? Is do you know the Maple Tour 5 star scroll? Yeah. Is that worth using on Tyrant Cape at all or no? It doesn't work on it. it. That would be great. Oh, but... it doesn't? Wow. No, when it comes to like star forcing scrolls and star forcing events, none of those ever apply on superior grade gear because those follow oh, okay. different rules. So they're just, you know. That would be, um, yeah, be the way to go if that worked for sure. <laughs> so it's better to just buy the piggy, I guess? Yeah, yeah, for now, yeah, because I think the piggy is getting removed soon, so if you have enough for the piggy, oh, I'll no. get one. Yeah, from what okay. I heard, they're removing it, I think, at the end of this uh, event, at the end of January, so... Oh, shit, I'm not even going to make it then. Yeah, it's if you're okay. not doing the extra runs, it takes a long time to be able to afford one. Why? No clue. They just... <laughs> they're just removing it. I don't know why. Um, I have one more question. Mm-hmm. Um, when doing... When mobbing, mm -hmm. is it more efficient to focus on making sure you kill a platform to so you're taking advantage of the respawn timer or just doing clean map rotations where you're doing the same movements each time and just kind of like spreading your dps across the screen um or is that very like a like a rough question it like depends per class probably and the size of the map is probably the more important thing there um, what you for could example, do, I'm, I'm, yeah, go for it. I'm training at like slurpy depths, mm -hmm. so like I have the option of like uh, two tapping like a platform, or I can just kind of like hop tap, hop tap, and like kill the monsters over the course of two map rotations, or do it one. Like I don't know if I should be focused on making the monsters respawn faster, mm -hmm. or yeah. Yeah, I guess that would rely on, to which extent you rely on AoEs that can hit bigger areas, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think if... Well, the best thing to do if you're wondering is do battle analysis. Have you ever done those? Okay, yes, I have. And just try the two different rotations, see if there's any kind of significant difference. 
Mm -hmm. And if it's different, if it's significant enough for you to apply one of the two, then then switch it up. And if it's kind of similar and it doesn't really matter, then just do whatever you feel like. I see. Okay. That's usually how I how I deal with those problems. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Yeah, because it's possible that the difference is like less than five percent. And that if yeah. the other one is like way more annoying for you and it's just not yeah, fun just to do, do, then it's like yeah, yeah, because you'll because <laughs> it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint, so you're gonna <laughs> it is. you're gonna stick with it for a long time. So yeah. Okay. Not all of us are over one million maple points. Yeah, I know. Not everyone does seven maple tours a day. I know. I forget. <laughs> I forget that sometimes. My bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, don't, don't neglect the um, the solo voyages and the CPQs for the Dinaros, um okay, in the long term. Maybe yeah, because it's 160 gear, and and your equip set will be falling apart. Um, if you get enough pieces before you get to the point where you're going to get your stuff legendary on your iron face, there is yeah. a, a benefit to just having like two monocles and two tattoos, because okay. then let's say you're you're aiming for the drop rate in the mezzo and then you end up with like three lines of stat and you do it on a on a monocle then that's okay. great because then you can just star force it up and it can be your damage thing but what if it happens on the zakum eye and you're stuck with like 27 percent stat on there that just right, feels really right. shitty because that set is going to fall apart and then you're using like a lower level item so as long as it's still epic and it's fine right now you don't need the damage or the utility from it right now if you can get to the other pieces and get it on there then that that would be you, again you're like kind of like skipping an unnecessary step, which in the long term always saves you money. Okay. I'll I'll work on that then. Yep. Um, Flame the Dominator. Um, that will be nice. Also, as part of the boss set, so that's always cool because you do want to yeah. get many pieces in there since you don't have the badge that you can rely on for the set bonus. So you want to get all the other ones in there. Shit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, and then if anything else gets replaced, um, then you don't, because you're still at nine, right? Two, four, six, eight, nine, because you have the two rings, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rings are very low stats, so they stay drop rate mezzo like forever, and then yes. get replaced by, you know, reinforced uh, um, uh, other event rings, stuff like that. Yeah, at least they look pretty. Oh yeah, they are, they're very shiny and sparkly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they they lighten up the inventory spot a little bit. Imagine if they took all the sparkle and the shine away from all the items, because it's. I know, right? It would just look so dull. <laughs> <laughs> It'll all, all look like the pencil here, just like gray yeah. and, and boring. <laughs> and all the accessories are like shiny and sparkly. Your secondary's got some sparkles there. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one more question. Go for it. Uh, how many languages do you speak? Like flu or, like fluently, or just even like dabble in like. Oh. I know I always hear you like, like you're kind of like, doing like Korean a little bit on stream or like you. Uh -huh. I've heard you speak like, French. I think like German. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try a little bit of our uh, Hebrew. <laughs> mm -hmm. That one's tough. Um, I mean like uh, define dabble because wait, what do you what do you speak? Do you speak Spanish? Uh, I speak Slovak. Slovak. And, uh huh. Yeah, that's all. Oh, that's okay. So, so, yeah, well, yeah, a little bit of English. Your, your English is yeah. okay. You can count that one. Um, <laughs> Slovak, okay. That's uh, that's not something I'm familiar with. It's like Eastern, mm. Eastern European. Yes, yes. No, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about that. I can say like three <laughs> words in Russian, but like that's probably hey, somewhat go. similar. I don't know. I don't know if you define dabble. I think it can be anywhere from like three to eight or something. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, just being. I like to be able to say like a few things in a lot of languages because I think it's very welcoming to to For people. Sure, when you, yeah, it is. That's true. And if you, I don't know, if you learn a little bit more about a language and how it's structured, I think it gives you good insight in in culture as well. Oh, it does for sure. Because yeah, people language is like, a huge part of, of of how your culture looks at yeah. things and. It, uh, you, you kind of like change your personality a little bit even when speaking a different language. Yeah, I think so. And it makes you flexible for other conversational partners in, in different languages. Like, for sure. Like in English, you say, I miss you. And then you are kind of the the focal point of that sentence, right? Not really right, actively, right. but passively. But then in, in French, you say, tu me manques, which means like you are missing. You you are missing, oh, basically. Wow. Like. That's like it, like you are not part of my being kind of <laughs> if you want to wow, get like really that's, that's so yeah. drastic yeah 
It's like you, you are you are lacking of me or something. Yeah. So it's like wow. the, the focal point is like very different. But that's yeah. it's a small nuance. But if you see small points like that in a lot of languages, that's really interesting to see how those languages grew because a lot of them came from the same root, but then ended up yeah. over the years switching a lot. Yeah. You know. Oh, I, I love noticing that little like similarities between languages. It's very, very interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or you can, as a complete layman, you can start seeing some connections within a language. And then, because mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. Hebrew, I very quickly realized some things of like how the sentence was structured and what the, what the words probably meant. And yeah, certain languages omit certain things, like they don't conjugate verbs at all. And some omit their vowels when they're writing, which is... Right. You know, horrible to learn in the beginning, but once you, <laughs> once you used to it, because if you think about it in English, if we let all of the vowels away, we could probably yeah. still read everything and do everything as well. Um, there'd be like a handful of situations where it could be multiple things, right, but right. you'd be surprised how much you could actually context guess and and get through everything. Mm -hmm. So kind of yeah, kind of makes sense. But yeah, so we have three spoken languages over here, and everyone learns English, so that you have like a okay foundation in four and those are both uh germanic and uh and roman languages so that right. gives you somewhat of a foundation of pretty much everything except for yeah, you russian can i guess make a lot of like connections if you're yeah just no no slavic whatsoever but mm -hmm. no slavic or or asian languages but all the other or african languages i guess but all the other mm -hmm. ones um you have something to go off of yeah that's cool all right man yep Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Yeah, you're very welcome. And um, I hope all the Star Forcing goes well. And it's cool that you're doing like a small guild and doing the stuff together. That's really, it's really cool. So I yeah, hope... yeah, we have a whole Discord and everything, and it's a, it's a nice little community. So I'm very happy to yeah, be hope... pushing out forward. Yeah, exactly. I hope that that like steadily grows and becomes like a, a good hub of like friendships and just hanging out and chilling and also achieving yeah. some stuff in the game. Exactly, that'd be nice. All right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Yes, you too. See ya. Bye. Okay, I have no idea how long that was. Probably a little bit too long again. But whatever, all right? It was nice. But yeah, I think that was two hours plus again. <laughs> I'm so horrible with time. It should be an hour and a half. My bad. Okay. Um, but yeah. Man, he had some cool stuff here. Look at that hat, dude. 54 luck and 6% all stat. That's so beautiful. But, I mean, he already has a 9%. He already has a 16 luck, 11 star, 9% luck hat. Like, the amount of money you have to sink in before this gets better, it, it, it's not enough of an upgrade to to go that way. Uh, but, yeah. That was a good session. If you enjoyed it, I'm glad. Hopefully, it was uh, helpful for you guys to see where you want to work on, what you want to focus on when you are moving through the game and if you like these sessions and you would like one of these as well check the description and please please contribute stats monster kills per hour battle analysis hopefully your you know 35k stat or higher 40k stat or higher the higher the stat the better reliable the battle analysis and um training videos moonbridge and up please check the description as well to um submit those so i can keep making up-to-date commands and up-to-date information to that I disseminate for free to everyone through all of my commands in my channel. So check those out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.